AEW Dynamite and WWE NXT live reactions play by play live right here on YouTube. Audio only with an AEW Revolution preview prediction at the end, so stay tuned. But thank you for tuning in and listening. As always, I'm your host, the Encyclopedia of Sports, Cool Hand Luke 96. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below with the thumbs up button. Share hashtag AEW, hashtag AEW Dynamite, hashtag WWE. NXT as well. Chat questions and comments, super chats, super stickers, always greatly appreciated. Tonight, both AEW and NXT have very big shows, if you will. Um, currently on TNT, The Equalizer, currently on USA Network, and CIS. As always, going to try to stay down the middle, equal it out with both AEW and NXT this evening in watching both professional wrestling shows. Uh, and giving uh, you all my uh, live reactions play by play uh, for uh, what I'm seeing, my perspective, of course, my uh, POV. But um, nonetheless, um, with AEW Dynamite uh, here this evening, go home, of course, for Revolution on Sunday. We'll get more into that pay review at the end, as mentioned. Uh, NXT has a, a few things announced as well. we'll get momentarily. Uh, but uh, there is a uh, report swirling around right now uh, with NXT, uh, their next TakeOver event next month during WrestleMania. Uh, whether or not it's going to be a TakeOver TV special or a TakeOver on a weekend, we don't know. Um, along with uh, NXT's move, uh, going to stay put on the USA Network, but move from um, a Wednesday night to a Tuesday night, potentially. And we'll have to see if uh, they clarify uh, any of that, make it official, of course, uh, as we move into the future. But we'll get more into that um, throughout the night as well, hopefully. Uh, but there is a report that NXT will be having their next NXT uh, takeover during WrestleMania week. Uh, and then NXT will be moving from Wednesday nights to Tuesday nights following WrestleMania, I believe, on April the 13th, which would be the night after the Raw after Mania. So two nights after night two of WrestleMania 37 next month. That will officially, reported at least, uh, until they make it official, of course, uh, be the uh, new night on the same home, for the time being at least, for NXT with, of course, here in the next few weeks as well, uh, WWE Network with the move to Peacock, We'll get more into all that as fast lanes uh, approaching on the 21st as well. But tonight, AW Dynamite and WWE NXT, um, and then Revolution on Sunday on the road to fast lane as we've been on the road to WrestleMania. But we even uh, had bigger breaking news in the WWE uh, that happened actually uh, just the other night on Monday Night Raw. About a week ago, Ms. Cashed in his Money in the Bank on. Uh, the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre, at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view event to become the new WWE Champion. However, Miz is now no longer the WWE Champ because the new and current champ has come a long way since fifth grade as Bobby Bitch, the almighty Bobby Lashley, is the new WWE Champion. But tonight, as mentioned, uh, going back with AEW and NXT, We'll have to see if NXT does um, make anything official with the future of uh, the yellow brand or not moving forward. Uh, NXT this evening, they have announced a WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match with Nia Jax and Shannon Baszler defending those tag team titles uh, against the winners of the Women's Dusty Roads Tag Team Classic in Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. Um, not going to be shocked if that match kicks off the show or even main events um, should be the main event actually honestly just compared to with everything else they have already now so I'm sure they'll have some fillers of course add-ins uh, throughout the night to fill the next uh, two hours um, as we are in fact live uh, I am recording this it's an audio only version of course this will be uploaded uh, tomorrow morning right here on the channel so be sure to subscribe thumbs up button once more if you haven't done so Already, but also tonight, WWE NXT, Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, uh, they'll be in a tag team non title match against Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. So, Burch and Lorcan, Ciampa and Thatcher, however, Burch and Lorcan uh, 
they will not be defending their NXT uh, tag team gold. Also tonight, Johnny Gargano and The Way will have a therapy session following recent mind games uh, from Dexter Loomis. Eli Drake, they just announced uh, a short time ago as well, now known, of course, as LA Knight, uh, which, going back to that, TakeOver Vengeance Day a few weeks ago. Come on. Couldn't have thought of a better name for him. But um, he's been on the show, I believe, every single week since, which is a, a good thing, good start at least. Uh, but Eli Drake, now, of course, known as LA Knight, uh, he's advertised as well. don't know if it's going to be another uh, promo as he's been doing or if he's actually going to be wrestling in a match tonight or not. Only time's going to tell. We'll see. But then also, uh, AW Dynamite then, uh, their very first Crossroads edition uh, for tonight's Go Home uh, Before Revolution on Sunday as Revolution, uh, the second ever AW Revolution pay-per-view, pushed back a few weeks compared to when it was last year uh, on leap day in the leap year of 2020 of course everyone know how 2020 went with COVID. hopefully everyone's staying safe but that's when john moxley won the aw world title from the champion chris jericho moxley in the championship match once again we'll get more into that uh with him and omega a little bit later on but tonight aw dynamite they have announced uh, max caster versus uh, preston vance number 10 of the dark order They'll be in a qualifying match for the uh, Face of the Revolution match that's taking place on Sunday at the pay-per-view as well. Also, Matt Hardy and one half of Private Party, Mark Quinn, will in tag team action take on Hangman Adam Page and John Silver of the Dark Order. So, I mean, this goes back, of course, to Matt Hardy and Hangman Adam Page. Um, they'll have a big money match on Sunday as well. So... Matt Hardy and Private Party, Hangman and the Dark Order. Hangman seems to be the, the new leader moving forward of the Dark Order. Uh, but we'll see when time's going to tell. In the meantime, opening video package for both AEW Dynamite and WWE NXT. Also, though, this evening, Jurassic Express with FTR and Tully Blanchard going to get back in the ring for the first time in years. Pac and Ray Phoenix in tag team action as well against, well, question mark, to be determined opponents. We don't know. We'll see. Uh, now the Rose... As it is Wednesday night, and you know what that means. They've done that every single week since passing the late, great Mr. Brody Lee. Now the lights have gone out in Duval. Here comes Cody Rhodes as the opening bout tonight on AEW Dynamite will, in fact, be Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet against Big Daddy Diesel, Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq, and Jade Cargill. Shaq, of course, is... Uh, touchdown uh, like Jerry Rice in the world of professional wrestling before. Of course, that was with the WWE. Now he's, of course, with the uh, relationship uh, AW has with TNT, of course, with Turner. And Shaq works for TNT for the NBA. Um, NBA All-Star Game on Sunday. That's why they're doing this match tonight rather than on the pay-per-view. Um, so because of some conflicts uh, with... Uh, Dates and such, of course, as mentioned, Revolution uh, pushed back here. Uh, just there's a lot going on once it is in pro wrestling. But opening contest, Cody Rose and Red Velvet would be Cody and Brandy, but Brandy's, of course, with Child. Uh, it'll be Cody Rose and Red Velvet who they're trying to get over in the women's division, along with Jade Cargill as well. Uh, but a mixed tag bout to kick off AW Dynamite this evening Cody Rose and Red Velvet with Shaq. And Jade Cargill. So, I mean, I would think Cody and Red Velvet are going to win this, but it's Shaq for God's sakes. Like, there's no one else bigger than Shaq uh, for the transition from basketball into wrestling. So, and and they just signed, of course, Paul White as well from the known as Big Show. And you go back to WrestleMania 32, that Battle Royal, Big Show with Shaq. So. We'll see how they, you know, play this, you know, moving forward. But um, it'll be Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet versus Shaq and Jade Cargo, AEW. Um, however, tonight, the finals of the AEW Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament will take place with Nala Rose and Ryo Mizunami. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, as, of course, one half is from the United States side, the other half from the Japanese side. Uh, as now here comes 
Jade Cargill. We'll see how they do uh, Shaq's entrance. But uh, Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet are, in fact, in the ring. Cody, the long Justin Roberts Rhodes introduction uh, with good old JR, Jim Ross, Excalibur, and Tony Schiavone on commentary. Of course, there are, in fact, fans in the stand, socially distanced, though, down in Jacksonville. Bailey's Place. Diesel Dog Mafia. 365 pounds. Here comes Shaq. I don't know if he weighs that much, but, you know, he hasn't been playing for how long, though, too. So, he walks out. He's got his uh, black tank top on, black wife beater. He's doing the... uh, just, you know, simple muscle pose. As he gets a good reaction from the crowd. Nice long introduction as well from Justin Roberts. But um, Shaq now in the ring. Arn Anderson going to be ringside for the Nightmare Family. Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet taking on Shaq and Jade Cargill. I wonder how much Shaq's going to do. Probably not a whole lot. I mean, he'll probably pick up Cody, chokeslam him once. But uh, other than that, and it looks like actually Cody and Shaq are going to kick things off here tonight. As NXT is also underway as well, uh, it looks like uh, it'll be Danny Burch and Ernie Lurkin taking on Timothy Thatcher and Tomasa Ciampa to um, kick off their show. But uh, Bell Rings... Match now officially underway. Here we go. Cody Rhodes and Shaq. Shaq with his size, probably 25 shoe. Will lock up with Cody in the middle of the ring. Cody going to carry this match. But then though, though uh, you would think at least, as Shaq shoves him down, does another muscle pose, the women are uh, out of the four competitors. They'll... Uh, showcase all their talents, hopefully. They'll probably get the short on the stick, but they'll they'll steal this match, you would think. But of course, Shaq and Cody Rhodes, um, the main headline. And to get people intrigued, to keep them, um, of course, if you're just now tuning in uh, and watching, well, why the hell Shaq wrestling on TV? You know, on TNT against Cody. Make them, you know, watch them start to finish. Shaq with a big chop. That had to hurt. But, um, yeah, currently right now uh, on AW, this crossroads edition, not the finisher move of Cody. Um, but, well, they took that. And, I mean, just as WWE's had, you know, roadblock and fast lane, well, we got a crossroads on the road to. Revolution, which is on Sunday, so we'll see if you know they keep the crossroads for the go home for every pay per view that they do. With of course, uh, Revolution, Double or Nothing, All Out, and then Full Gear, um, and then uh, you know their um, their summer shows as well with uh, you know Fire Fest and Fight for the Fallen, uh, among you know a few others. Hell, I mean we had Beach Break last month. Um, few other uh, TV specials uh, for AEW, along with NXT as well. But, um, yeah, we'll see what the uh, future holds, of course, moving forward. So make sure this is still recording here, as it looks like it is. We good? We good? It sounds like we're good. It looks like we're good. So I guess we're good. Maybe, maybe not. Check, check, check. One, two, three. Check, one, two. All right, I guess we're good. We'll find out at the end of this. Um, If not, well, I guess we're shit out of luck. But um, tag made. Women are now legal. Red Velvet and Jade Cargill. 
and red velvet was only uh inserted because of course cody and uh brandy are expecting i believe a baby girl if i'm not mistaken uh, but of course brandy Rhodes eden as she was known in the wwe as a ring announcer is uh of course pregnant and she had been replaced then by red velvet so cody and red velvet versus Shaq and jade cargill on aew so two tag team matches uh side by side here with both dynamite and nxt jade now doing push-ups in the middle of the ring but cody and red velvet taking on Shaq and jade cargill on aew and then nxt as be sure to use the hashtags aw hashtag aw dynamite hashtag WWE NXT when you share on social media we got uh danny burks johnny lorkin taking on uh, tomaso champa and timmy thatcher but also tonight on aw as mentioned um we'll have the finals of the aw women's world championship eliminated tournament uh, where the winner will then face sheeta the sunday at revolution for the aw women's championship tonight now the rose and ryo mizunami i believe that's how you pronounce that hopefully i didn't uh, mess it up there for a second time uh but they'll square off tonight um unless they're going to push it back to revolution uh, and then uh have uh, whoever wins that compete twice in one night come sunday uh, at the pay-per-view but rose and mizunami uh whoever wins that will face sheeta on sunday for the women's championship also tonight though aw dynamite uh, we'll have a Chris Jericho, MJF, Inner Circle, Revolution press conference. As Shaq, in the meantime, as he's ringside, ref has to break it up. Shaq was just uh, grabbing a, a few members of the Nightmare family from the crowd and uh, actually just throwing them all around. Here, here comes Red Velvet now off the top rope. Nice moonsault from her to take out both Cody and Jade Cargill. And what a match, says JR. As Cody gets back in the ring, they're going to show a replay of that. And it really didn't hit, but all right. She actually took out uh, Cody, Jade, and uh, QT Marshall. So she did more damage to her own team than, you know, she did to the opponent. As uh, Shaq was uh, being, as he's now back up on the ring apron as well, he was... Um, be intended there by the official breaking that up but uh now submission in the middle of the ring as the women are uh in full control here red velvet and jade cargill excited for this chris jericho mjf inner circle revolution press conference uh because they're going to be challenging the young bucks on sunday for the aw world tag team titles as well um and there's a few different routes that they can go with this of course, if they have MJF along with Jericho uh, win these titles, or even if they don't, um, okay, if they're champs, okay, they're going to be champions probably until you would think double or nothing, or maybe for about a month and they break it up and, you know, have a singles match then double or nothing. But they are smart, in my opinion, as Jericho has been putting over a lot of talent since uh, AEW, of course, uh, formed. Jericho and MJF have them uh, win the titles tonight. Now, if you don't, okay, whatever, so be it. Then have the singles match at double or nothing, but have them win the titles on Sunday, actually, against the Young Bucks. Because the Young Bucks, I mean, hell, they don't even really need them, but they are uh, champions, uh, tag team champions in AEW currently right now, with Omega being your AEW World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, so, too sweet me, the elite. But nonetheless... Um, with Jericho putting over talent, as mentioned, throughout the years, uh, especially as of late uh, with MJF right now in the process of doing so. Uh, I mean, you go back to Orange Cassidy last summer. Before then, it was Moxley. And, I mean, there's three top talents right now uh, in the company, um, among a few others as well. Uh, just Just name those three to name a few but um if they were smart in my eyes this is what i do uh if i were aw with jericho and mjf with the inner circle of course sam guevara's um sort of quit on them but it's all storytelling it's a storyline so 
We'll see what they end up, of course, doing with it moving forward. As in the meantime, Red Velvet actually sets up two tables side by side ringside. Cody and Shaq looking for hot tags. But these women have been uh, the legal competitors in this match now for quite some time. So we'll get it, yeah, probably about a 20 minute match or so, I think. Um, maybe a little bit longer than that. Now, actually, here come Cody and Shaq as they tag in. Of course, with it being a mixed tag match, men versus men, women versus women, Shaq, uh, he wants to lock up after giving Cody, hey, these are how big my muscles are. But uh, now Shaq going to try to play some mind games here. Never did I uh, think I'd see Shaq back in a pro wrestling ring, whether it be WWE or now, hell, even AEW for that matter. But I get it, you know, with the connection, the relationship. AEW has, of course, with Turner because they're on TNT, for God's sakes. Shaq going for a power bomb. Shaq power bomb to Cody Rhodes. So a Shaq bomb in the middle of the ring. And then Cody getting up. Old school with a... Oh, my God. Come on. He barely picked him up and slammed him down. Cody now with the cover. One, two, kick out. Actually, Shaq just threw him up in the air. Cody going to crawl over to Red Velvet, tag her. And so the women are back at it now. Red Velvet and Jade Cargill. As we're back on NXT as well following commercial break. Danny Burch and lurking Timothy Thatcher. Along with Tomas Ciampa in tag team action. Now, chops from the, these two women back and forth in the middle of the ring. But Cody hit a right hand as he was down. And then Shaq off the ropes. Power slam. He barely picked them up. But, um, yeah, we got a Chris Jericho MJF Inner Circle Revolution uh, press conference. That the Young Bucks, I would assume, will be involved with one way or another. Uh, especially following uh, last week's attack on Papa Buck. But, um... Yeah, if AEW was smart, my eyes, spine buster actually from Jade to Red. And she's going to tag in. No. She says no to Shaq. Here comes Cody to break up the count. But um, I'd have Jericho and MJF win the tag team titles on Sunday. Ref not paying any attention. And then through those two tables. Pretty sweet. Uh, Cody off the ropes. And then just went flying, took out Shaq, who was standing on the ring apron. And they go through those two tables, set up ringside. The women are still legal. So the finish of this is going to be good from, from that angle that we just saw, of course. With Red Velvet now back in the ring, squaring up uh, Jade Cargill. They totally missed it. Cover, though, one, two, and a kick out at two and a half. The camera panned back at the last second. It was a little too late. So I don't even know what the hell uh, Red Velvet just used there. They're saying a spear. So I don't know if it was a spear or just a... I don't even know what the hell she just did. I don't because they didn't show it. Camera completely missed it. But these women are still legal now. Red Velvet picking up Jade. Jade going to reverse it, pick up Red. Gets reversed again. And then a right hand, no. One, two, and Jade Cargill along with Shaq defeat Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet tonight now on AEW Dynamite. As uh, it seems like we also have the finish. Actually, no, they're going to continue on NXT. It seemed like the ref was calling for the bell. But Thatcher and Chomper are in full control right now of Birch and Lorcan. They'll probably win because it's a non-title match, but we'll see. Um... But yeah, the women, as mentioned there, they uh, really, for the most part, were in this match for however long it ended up being, almost 20 minutes. A good probably 10, 12 minutes of this match. Don't go away. We'll be right back, says JR. So they're going to take a quick commercial break. They'll fade to black. EW Dynamite on TNT, of course, brought to you by their sponsors. Uh, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe right here on YouTube if you haven't done so already uh but um yeah that was a good match that was a good finish um so we'll have to see uh of course 
how it did in regards to, uh, in their eyes at least, uh, with the ratings on, hey, bringing in Shaq, did it work or not, basically, and are we going to do this again? Um, so, and if, of course, it's going to dip from now until when they come back, because they take a commercial break right after the match, and if, are people going to, you know, stay tuned and, and come back? I sure as hell am, because I'm watching right now, and recording live reactions play play and thank you for tuning in and listening be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already hopefully tune in on the 21st as well for WWE Fastlane uh, Wednesday before that though two weeks from now NFL free agency will begin so videos on that as well but uh, a lot of videos uh, in the upcoming future right here on the YouTube channel so just be sure to subscribe hit that red uh, subscribe button a little notify bell next to it as well so you can get notified of course when New content is published. That's all I have to do. Uh, that's all I ask. Just be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. The easiest way to stay up to date. Red subscribe button. Little uh, notification bell next to it as well. So um, we'll see what uh, both AW and NXT do now uh, throughout the rest of the night moving forward. As it uh, seems like actually, well, Birch and Lorcan, they defeat Ciampa and Thatcher on NXT. So, And they'll retain their titles because it was a non-title match. The titles weren't even on the line, but... That seems to be uh, the route they're going um, there for the time being. Um, but MSK also won the Dusty Cup on the men's side. So next takeover, um, you know, MSK with uh, Danny Burch and Lurkin probably winning those titles as well. Maybe Ciampa turned on Thatcher here, you know, maybe vice versa. We'll see. But... Um, That uh, being the WWE, for God's sakes. But he did, and now he's all elite. He already was all elite, but he's all in with all elite wrestling now. So they're showing some replays now of the match that just, of course, ended with Cody and Shaq. However, the women with the finish as they put Shaq into an ambulance. So Shaq's in an ambulance on his way to the hospital, so they say, however, we all know what happens there. I'll just drive around the parking lot for a little bit. And Tony Schiavone actually uh, out back of the ambulance. He's going to open up the back door of the ambulance and get a word with Shaq, who's on a stretcher. And actually, Shaq's not even in the ambulance now. Where the hell did Shaq go? So, of course, that's what they did during the commercial break to... Make it look good for TV. So Shivani going to send it back to uh, JR. However, we got our next match. And it looks like it's going to be another tag team bout. What do we got here? Here comes Pac. All right. Pac and Ray Phoenix. Minus, uh, of course, Pentagon. Penta L. Zero M. Uh, who's in the ladder match on Sunday as well at Revolution. Winner of that ladder match will receive a TNT title match at some point. So, yeah, Pac and Ray Phoenix are going to win this. They're taking on some jobbers. I don't even know who the hell's in the ring, but there's already a tag team in the ring. Here come Pac and Ray Phoenix. Here's our tag team match with them. And speaking of the tag team with, you know, the inner circle, um... You have, you know, Hager as your big guy, Simi Guevara as your mid-card, um, Santana and Ortiz as your tag team, but however, Jericho and MJF are current uh, number one contenders for the tag team titles. Uh, and then also, uh, you have, uh, well, with Chris Jericho, you know, being the demo god himself, the champion, being, you know, Chris Jericho, for God's sakes, like, he's top dog. MJF's, like, next in line. Um, if they were smart, though, going back to this, trying to wrap it up here real quick before we move on. Um, Jericho and MJF, Inner Circle Revolution press conference with the Bucks of youth getting involved in one or another, you would think. If they were smart, they'd have them win the tag team titles on Sunday. 
drop the tag team titles, say at double or nothing, and then you have uh, your feud with Jericho and MJF in singles competition all summer long, and then have, just as they did last year with Jericho and Orange Cassidy, have uh, three separate uh, main event matches, basically, and have the uh, third and final that at all out, you know, late August, early September, Labor Day weekend. Um, but we'll see what, what happens, uh, you know, in that regard. Quick tag team match with uh, Pac and Ray Phoenix as they defeated whoever the hell it is faced. Uh, I don't know if that was cut short because with what happened in the opening tag team match, um, ran over or not, I don't know. They're advertising a few more matches uh, for AEW and segments for that matter uh, here tonight as well. So, yeah, once more for AEW Dynamite. Uh, we got uh, Max Caster versus Preston Vance, number 10 of the Dark Order, in a qualifying match uh, for the Face of the Revolution ladder match on Sunday. Uh, Matt Hardy and uh, Mark Quinn will take on Hangman Adam Page and John Silver in tag team action as well. Jurassic Express versus FTR and Tully Blanchard, a six man tag, as Tully's return in the ring, first time in years, as mentioned. We just saw Pac and Ray Phoenix defeat whoever the hell they just beat. Uh, in the meantime, though, here comes the champion, your demo god himself, Chris fucking Jericho, as the Chris Jericho and MJF Inner Circle Revolution press conference is up next right now on the Crossroads edition of AEW Dynamite Before Revolution on Sunday. Come Sunday, it'll be Jericho and MJF versus the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Meantime, we'll sing along to Judas. Uh, but they also advertise, of course, Nala Rose and Ryo Mizunami in the AW Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament Finals. Winner to face Sheeta at Revolution this Sunday as well for the Women's Championship. Uh, Sting and Darby Allen are going to be appearing as they got a street fight versus Team Taz on Sunday as well. Paul White, of course, formerly known as The Big Show, will be on AEW tonight as well for the first time ever. AEW Dynamite, a very big show with everyone singing along to Judas. I've been a saint to the Judas in my mind. So Jericho with MJF and MJF's bodyguard in Wardlib because it's always done. He's the other big guy in the inner circle. Don't want to leave him out by any means. Uh, but um, as all the fans sing along to Judas, uh, we got the MJF, Chris Jericho MJF. As MJF at some point in time, of course, probably will become the new leader uh, of the inner circle in time being, but only time will tell. But the Jericho MJF Inner Circle Revolution press conference is up next. Maybe Sammy Guevara gets involved. You know, one way or another as well, and screws me over a little bit more. But uh, we'll see. In the meantime, on NXT, we got the current NXT champion and the Prince, Finn Balor, and his NXT championship on his shoulder in the ring. Cutting a promo on Roddy Strong of the Undisputed Era, and Roderick Strong going to attack and take down Finn Balor, of course. Uh, this goes back to Vengeance Day with... Uh, actually even goes back further than that, but ref's now going to try to come down and break this up. But, uh, of course, Adam Cole turning on the Undisputed Era, as there are no more, the demise of the Undisputed Era is finally upon us. And um, we'll see the deal with Balor and his NXT Championship, if he's going to defend it against Cross or Cole, uh, or even O'Reilly in a uh, singles match, triple threat, fatal four-way. Um I would think, as mentioned, it's going to be Finn Balor and Karrion Cross in singles competition for the NXT Championship. Uh, and then also uh, with uh, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly uh, as basically your co-main event. But O'Reilly is once again injured. Uh, so Strong still involved. Bobby Fish is still sidelined with an injury. So we'll see what they do there. But um, we got uh, Vic Joseph along with Beth Phoenix on the call for NXT this evening. No Wade Barrett. For some reason, that's bad news. Actually, Wade Barrett, bad news, Wade Barrett is now a remote correspondent. So, of course, for some reason, he's not in Orlando at the WWPC, um, the new Capital Wrestling Center, if you will. 
but now we're in Orlando at some uh, psychiatric center for uh, Johnny Gargano and the Ways Therapy. As uh, this is giving me vibes of uh, Team Hell No with Daniel Bryan and Kane seeing a therapist to work uh, everything out. So we'll see what they do there. But um, yeah, also tonight at AEW, uh, we got Sting and Darby Allen. Uh, as mentioned, they'll be in a street fight come Sunday uh, against Team Taz uh, and Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. Sting and Darby are, of course, going to be winning that match. Uh, Paul White, though, from the known, of course, is the big show. We'll be on AEW this evening as well for the first time ever. They actually announced that um, last Wednesday that he was signed. He was supposed to be on last week. They held off, and he's on tonight. And we already just saw Cody and Red Velvet lose to Shaq and Jake Cargill after the big power bomb, uh, and then the table spot ringside. So, um, and then Shaq actually escaping the ambulance, and no one knows how the hell that happened. So we'll have to see if they go back to that later on tonight, or at some point down the line, or not. But uh, in the meantime, we got a inner circle press conference, and this goes back to the debate they had uh, Jericho and Orange Cassidy uh, back early fall with Eric Bischoff, of course, coming in. Uh, they've teased that. actually done this a few different times. But uh, it seems like Dosh is going to be holding down the fort here as Jericho and MJF are now going to be asked questions, of course. It's a press conference. It's how those go. You ask questions. You get a response. You write your article. You take your videos. Move on. And everybody talks then. But uh, Revolution this Sunday... Jericho, MJF, Inner Circle, Revolution, Press Conference. Seven. Dwayne Johnson gets name dropped on AEW. Of course, The Rock. Jericho saying none of his former tag team partners he's had in the past are better than MJF. I bet you any money. Big Show comes out, of course, because... Uh, Jericho and uh, Big Show had a uh, tag team back in the day. And then, actually, Jericho name drops Papa Buck. Is that Conrad Thompson? Jesus Christ. Conrad Thompson on AEW. Going to ask the Inner Circle some questions at this press conference. What are the odds of letting Sammy Guevara back in the Inner Circle? You go. Jericho answered the question. Go back to Nebraska. He's from like the deep south for God's sakes and he's married to one of Ric Flair's daughters. And Brandon Walker was just on NXT. Brandon Walker now in AEW. Why did we attack Papa Buck? So Brandon Walker on the NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day pre-show last month, now on AW Dynamite this evening. Of course, he works for Barstool Sports, so he can do whatever the hell he wants. Maybe McAfee's going to show up. They, they were teasing that earlier today that, uh, you know, Cody Rhodes stated that uh, McAfee's been calling asking for a job every single day of the past however many months since he, you know, stole the show in NXT late last year. MJF says he doesn't shop at Target or Baby Gap like all of us. Target chance, Baby Gap chance, hashtag Target, hashtag Baby Gap. And MJF with some new nicknames for both Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks. He's got it. He has it, let me tell you. MJF as he hands over the mic to Santana and Ortiz. Just called somebody a bitch ass.
especially knowing there there is not a line that the inner circle wouldn't cross, which is, you know, you know, true if I've ever heard uh, a statement in the world of pro wrestling. Hey, Eric Bischoff's back, and he's uh, better than ever. And Jericho can't believe it. Eric Bischoff? Oh, my. Name drops his podcast. So they bring in uh, Conrad Thompson, Brandon Walker, and Eric Bischoff for this uh, press conference this evening. And it's a two-part question from Eric Bischoff. Where does that rank at with Jericho going after the uh, Young Bucks with a vengeance? First off, Eric B., shut your mouth. Second of all, we don't care about Papa Buck. As far as Matt and Nick Jackson goes, and then Jericho gets cut off by their music. So here come the Young Bucks. AEW Dynamite the Crossroads. Their music's playing, but they're not playing their uh, entrance video package by any means. And they're going to walk out. I don't even think they're going to do their pose. Or even have the, the money shoot. They got mics, they're going to talk. They call the inner circle pricks. You made it personal. As Cameron Grimes is showing off all his money to William Regal on NXT. So the Young Bucks, we got Cameron Grimes and $100 bills. Trying to move his career along in a good way. Future's bright for him, I think, but he just hasn't been put in a good spot. Christopher and Maxwell, Matthew and Nicholas. Papa Buck. Dream big. Dream big, do what you want to do. Seems like they announced Finn Balor and Roderick Strong in singles competition later on tonight, potentially the main event of NXT. Aaliyah going to be in action coming up next, though. Bust your ass, do it yourself. DIY. Well, Gargano is part of the way as your NXT North American champion. And Chomp is in a tag team right now with Thatcher. And uh, the Revival are now FTR and AEW, and they'll uh, team up with Tully Blanchard to take on Jurassic Express later on. Without Papa Buck, there would be no Young Bucks. They probably wouldn't even be in AEW, and well, that's true too, because if he wouldn't have, you know, gave it to his mom and blah, 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 all that, so you get my point. Oh my, they, they drop uh, MJF and Rosie O'Donnell when he was a kid. Rosie, Rosie. Inner Circle Revolution press conference is turning into an episode of about ready to at least Jerry Springer. Jerry, Jerry. Oh. Young Bucks. You probably won't even be sniffing the curtain at the Performance Center. So they're name dropping WWE a lot this evening. That was that was good though. Because they don't even call it the PC anymore. They call it the Capital Wrestling Center. They're going to kick some ass. Super kick. Double super kick from the Young Bucks to both Jericho and MJF. 
Dasha running away. Inner circle, though, with the manpower taking out the Young Bucks. However, here comes Brandon Cutler and some officials. And now we've got some other backstage personnel coming out trying to break this up as well. But, of course, this is for the AW World Tag Team Championships come Sunday. Young Bucks, Jericho, and MJF. Young Bucks in the inner circle. And now, here come the Good Brothers, two Sweet Me There, Gals and Anderson. They got a table. Get the table. They're going to set that up. They are your current Impact Tag Team Champions. So Gallo's going down the ring, so I don't know what the hell he's about to do. We've got the Young Bucks with Carl Anderson machine gun himself up on the uh, entrance. What are they going to do here? They got somebody in their circle on that table now. Are they going to jump off the top of the entrance? Are they going to climb to the top of the walkway? And two, well, they actually have two tables set up. They're going to do a double um, table spot here. Elbow drop and a frog splasher moonsault, it looked like, through the tables. Uh, for the Young Bucks to the inner circle, but it wasn't to Jericho or MJF. looked like it was to Santana and Ortiz. So, I mean, standing tall, I mean, it really doesn't mean a whole lot anymore anyway. I'm going home for pay-per-views, but according to that, I mean, Young Bucks are going to drop the titles to both Jericho and MJF on Sunday, which, you know, like I said, either way, they, um, whichever way they go with this, I wouldn't mind. Um, they could go either way, honestly. So, uh, we'll see what they do, but, um, it'll be, uh, Young Bucks, Jericho, and MGF on Sunday Revolution for the AW World Tag Team Championships. I'd like to see Jericho and MGF win those, uh, give the Inner Circle something else to do moving forward. Um, uh, but we'll see. Now we've got a video package for uh, Omega and Moxley, as they have on Sunday uh, for the AW World Heavyweight Championship an exploding barbed wire death match you heard me right you heard that correct it'll be Kenny Omega defending his AW World Heavyweight Championship against John Moxley in the first ever All Elite Wrestling AW Dynamite at AW Revolution this Sunday March 7th 2021 in an exploding barbed wire death match as they actually show some highlights of older um, deathmatch matches. Uh, however, this is an exploding barbed wire deathmatch. And then, of course, this goes back a few weeks as well, even longer than that, too. Um, with, of course, the long term builds to the point they're at right now. Um, Omega, over the past few weeks or so, you know, he's been playing golf, uh, welding. Uh, in his uh, workshop as well, it seems like, um, among a, a few other uh, things. But Moxley debuted at Double or Nothing coming up almost two years ago now. Attacked Kenny Omega at full gear back in 2019. They had a lights out match, I believe it was. Um, Omega, of course, is now your AW uh, World Heavyweight Champion after he defeated John Moxley. Uh, back early December, the same night Sting debuted. We still have Sting and Darby Allen to come later on tonight. However, right now, FTR, F the rest, with Tully Blanchard in ring gear. And J.J. Dillon as well. It'll be um, FTR with Tully Blanchard taking on Jurassic Express coming up next, it looks like. And now we've got an AW uh, commercial for the Countdown to Revolution, which will be next on TNT following Dynamite this evening, taking the spot of a movie that, of course, would have been on. Afterwards, this uh, women's match in NXT 
which looks to be a tag team with Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart taking on um, WWE's, uh, NXT's version at least, of uh, Tony Khan and his team. But um, yeah, Shotzi and Ember are going to pick up the win there. So uh, yeah, moving ahead here, moving forward, um, you know, the long-term booking to where they've gotten now. I mean, you go back to, um, like I said, well, even a year ago, okay, Brody Lee comes in this time. Um, he's the exalted one. He's the leader of the Dark Order. Matt Hardy debuted on the same night as well, coming up here almost a year ago now, a couple weeks. Hard to believe, but it's been uh, one fast hell of a year, no doubt about it, for sure. Um, you know, Hangman kicked out of the Elite. Um, sort of just floating. Now it seems like he's going to be the new leader of the Dark Order, following, of course, the passing of the late great uh, Exalted One, Mr. Brody Lee, uh, who was the leader of the Dark Order. And then Big Money Matt is also back as well with Matt Hardy. And it'll be a Big Money match on Sunday uh, at Revolution with Hangman and Matt Hardy. And they'll be in tag team action still to come later on tonight as well. But, um, you know, you go back to, you know, Jericho and MJF and the Inner Circle and Jericho putting everyone over. Um, and the Inner Circle is still, you know, the top faction in, in the in the company. Uh, we just saw that press conference, of course, uh, end with the Young Bucks standing tall. Still got Paul White, Big Show, to come tonight as well. But up next will be FTR with Tully Blanchard. Who knows how much he'll do. Uh, but FTR and Tully versus Jurassic Express. But, um, you know, we just saw that video package as well with um, Moxley challenging Omega for the World Heavyweight Championship once more come Sunday in an exploding barbed wire death match at Revolution. Um, but you got to go back to Double or Nothing two years ago when Moxley debuted. Uh, of course, attacked Omega uh, at the end of the show. They had their match at full gear that year. And then Moxley became champion last year at Re Revolution, going back to with what I stated right at the get-go here uh, this evening from the start. Um, beat Jericho, held it from last February until this past December when Omega beat him on the same night Sting debuted uh, to become AEW, you know, world champion. So now we're going to get uh, Omega and Moxley on Sunday. And I don't know if we're going to have anything else with those two tonight or not. Probably not, just with everything going on. Along with, you know, the Good Brothers already getting involved with the Young Bucks there with the Inner Circle just before the last commercial break here. So... But that'll be the main event on Sunday. Exploding barbed wire death match. Kenny Omega defending his AW World Heavyweight Championship against John Moxley. AEW's done a damn good job. NXT has as well. But since uh, they've been head to head, and now, of course, NXT report is they're going to be moving, um, I'd have to give AEW the, the nod with the booking, how good. Everything's been... NXT's been good, though, too. There's no doubt about it, but... You know, NXT's not building a company. They're building a brand, but not a company. AEW is literally building... Uh, starting from the ground up. You know, NXT... You know, was NXT on the network for how many years before the move to TV... As WWE's third brand. And that's what they still are, of course, but... Um, if you watch Raw and SmackDown in the WWE, you know, nine out of ten people are also gonna be watching NXT. Some don't though. I know I know a few who only watch Raw or SmackDown and don't watch NXT. Because, you know, they already see enough WWE programming and they want to watch something else. So they watch AEW on Wednesday nights. Well now you can watch everything. Hell I've watched everything as it's been, so they're not gonna um, change for me by any means, but uh, in the meantime, bell rings, match underway. FTR, Tully Blanchard versus Jurassic Express. As it seems like Marco Stunt's good to go. Back to action following his uh, so-called injury he had. So yeah, um, FTR, Tully, taking on uh, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, and Marco Stunt here. A few suplexes now in the middle of the ring. 
but uh, for the most part, it looks like, it seems like here that Jurassic Express is in full control right now. But I'll digress there. J.J. Dillon was a member of, uh, was a four horseman, right? I'm going to look into this. I believe so, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I think. Could be wrong. J.J. Dillon. Yeah, he was a manager. But... Yeah, he was the manager of the Four Horsemen. Which, of course, had, you know, Ric Flair, who's still in WWE. Um, Tully Blanchard, who's in AW. And then... Uh, Arn and Ole, and Arn is in AEW as well as the manager of the Nightmare Family with Cody Rhodes. Um, and of course, I mean, you're going to throw Lex and uh, Barry Windham, the uh, grandfather uh, to, or the uncle, excuse me, uh, to the Fiend Bray Wyatt, the brother of IRS. Um, you know, you can do that as well. But, yeah, J.J. Dillon, yeah, he's the manager for the uh, Four Horsemen. He's ringside. So. FTR, of course, your old school tag team. Stay with us, says JR. They're going to go pitcher and pitcher with the commercial break. Hashtag AW Dynamite. Hashtag WWE NXT. We got a cut and grass commercial with, hey, there's Gorilla Glue. Hopefully everyone's stayed away from that as of late, but actually it was Gorilla Tape, but it's the, the Gorilla uh, brand with the tape, the glue, everything that they sell. Um, so don't be putting you know any of that in your hair or wherever the hell you've been putting it at, to say the least. Um, you know, it seems like it's Tide Pods 2.0 all over again, but nonetheless, uh, yeah, AW Dynamite, hashtag that, hashtag WWE NXT when you share on social media. Um, but they go pitcher and pitcher as they actually advertise in the meantime, too. Still to come. Uh, Shivani going to talk with Paul White, Big Show, as he'll speak tonight on AW Dynamite next week on NXT. Io Shirai going to defend her NXT Women's Championship against Tony Storm in singles competition, so that should be a good match. Uh, and then, yes, Finn Balor, Roderick Strong also still to come later on now tonight as well. Um, but, um, yeah, split screen on AEW, commercial break on NXT as well. So now in the meantime, uh, sort of, uh, but hey, that's what you got to do sometimes. Actually, they're going to have Dakota Kai come out before commercial break coming up, looks like. As it will be the WWE Women's Tag Team championship match with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler on NXT this evening defending those titles against the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic winners for the women's in Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. But as I was saying this is you know what you got to do sometimes if you're you know of course looking for any advice by any means. Um, there's always going to be downfall there's always downside to everything. You're going to have some downtime in the middle of, you know, watching these. But, hey, just just keep that mouth moving. Um, and as mentioned, we'll get more into, you know, both of these uh, promotions uh, continuing on here the next hour or so. Because, um, you know, with the report swirling, if NXT is going to make it official tonight or not, that they're going to have TakeOver next month. Whether it be a TV takeover special or not, or on the weekend, I don't know. We'll see. Probably through the week, just because if it's going to be WrestleMania weekend, they're not going to have it on a Saturday or a Sunday, because that's when WrestleMania 37 is. Two nights spectacular once again this year. They're not going to have an NXT for, as far as we know, at least on the show. They'll have their own, you know, show for takeover, as it should be in my eyes at least. Whatever has their own opinion, let me know in the comments below what you think so far this evening. But, uh, yeah, we'll see if NXT is going to make it official with NXT. Uh, their next takeover next month sometime, along with 
the potential move from Wednesdays to Tuesday nights. And then still to come later on tonight as well, following the conclusion of AEW Dynamite, they'll have a countdown to Revolution that I just found out about uh, post-Dynamite this evening, the Crossroads special. Uh, we will, in fact, uh, preview, we'll predict uh, Revolution uh, for Sunday's pay-per-view, so stay tuned. But uh, now back to the action on Dynamite. In the meantime, with FTR and Tully Blanchard taking on Jurassic Express. And then uh, as on NXT, Dakota Connor Cole Gonzalez with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler being introduced. We'll have the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match take place next as the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic winners, Kyle and Gonzalez, will challenge and should honestly win, but they won't. Um... Okay, we're back uh, about an hour or so in, about another hour or so to go, plus the Revolution preview predictions. I uh, had to take a uh, little bit of a break there. I uh, was having uh, some technical difficulties uh, with my uh, recording platform that I use uh, for, of course, audio. Uh, so, um, yeah, I don't even know. Uh, as I pause both AW and NXT... Uh, we're still sitting at this six-man tag with FTR and Drax Express and the uh, Women's Tag Team Championship match about to get underway. Uh, so uh, after a bit of a delay here, about 10 or 15 minutes or so, uh, nothing major. Um, long story short, I just don't even know where the hell uh, I was with what I was saying or what the hell I just uh, said there. Uh, the last, uh, before I, of course, paused it and then, of course, restarted um so i'll leave it at that but um hey yeah let's just move on get back into it with uh aw dynamite uh with uh the crossroads edition go home tonight before revolution on sunday currently a uh six-man tag team match ftr and tully blanchard versus Drax express and then on WWE NXT, uh we have nia jackson Shayna baszler about to defend their WWE Women's Tag Team Titles uh, against the 2021 Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic winners on the women's side in Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. So, without uh, any further ado, we'll get back into it now with AEW Dynamite and WWE NXT following a uh, technical difficulty delay. Sorry. Uh, by any means uh, with uh, more tone difficulties here on the channel but uh, just always thank you for the support thank you for tuning in and listening as mentioned this will be uh, uploaded uh, tomorrow uh, but just be sure to uh, as we are in fact live right now but audio only so it's going to have to of course do what it does it's going to do its thing uh, before it gets uploaded uh, tomorrow once more so just be sure to like follow and subscribe as always on social media links in the description below and um, yeah I'm your host Encyclopedia Sports go ahead and Luke 96 like follow and subscribe links in the description Facebook Twitter Instagram right here on YouTube red subscribe button little notification bell next to it as well thumbs up button share hashtag AW Dynamite hashtag WWE NXT keep those chat questions and comments Super chat, super stickers rolling. So yeah, tone difficulty. Not gonna uh, hurt myself. Uh, drag it out here much longer by any means. Um, hey, no, you can't stop me. We're gonna move on. So, AW Dynamite and WWE NXT currently, as mentioned, once more and for the final time now, a six-man tag with FTR and Tully Blanchard taking on Jurassic Express. With J.J. Dillon, the former manager of the Four Horsemen ringside, and then Nia Jack, Shayna Baszler defending their WWE Women's Tag Team titles against Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. So here we go. About a 10 or 15 minute or so delay, as mentioned, but we're back to it. So FTR in full control here of Jurassic Express. Big. Uh, kick there though from Luchasaurus and in the meantime he's going to hit a double suplex on FTR Dash and Cash 
The bell rings, match underway with Naya and Dakota as they'll kick this tag team championship match off. FTR moves out of the way in the corner as Luchasaurus goes face first into the middle turnbuckle. Mice uh, power slam there on the reversal. Luchasaurus looks like he's got some uh, green liquid coming out of his mouth. But uh, yeah, no setbacks here. We're moving on. So, nice DDT ringside on the floor from FTR to Luchasaurus. Kick there from Jungle Boy, Jungle Boy Jack, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, all the goddamn nicknames JR has for him. Of course, son of the late great Luke Perry. Jungle Boy now going to go off the top rope. Actually, a tag is made. I don't think Jungle Boy saw it. Nice vertical suplex off the top rope and then a frog splash. And a cover, kick out at two. As Tully's looking to tag in, but another suplex. Another cover, one, two, kick out at two and a half. FTR in full control right now. And then Marco with a frog splash of his own. Now all hell's broken loose. Here comes Tully. He's not legal, he just entered the match. And then uh, off the top rope uh, with the... Uh, so they're calling it slingshot vertical suplex uh, from Tully Blanchard to Marco Stunt. And then Luchasaurus is telling Tully, hey, get back in the ring. He's going to choke slam him, it looks like. And then a big kick in the meantime on the reversal from Luchasaurus to Tully Blanchard. Luchasaurus not going to tag in. He's legal. And Luchasaurus... Uh, along with, actually, no, Luchasaurus is legal. Yeah, Jungle Boy went for the pin. Cover one, two, and a kick out. Yeah, so I believe Cash is legal for FTR. Yeah, because Dax is ringside. And then who the hell is that? Who the hell is that? Somebody just uh, came out from underneath the ring in a AW. Hooded sweatshirt and their face is covered. And then whoever the hell that is just hit a right hand to Luchasaurus giving FTR control. Tag made. And Dax is now legal. He's the bald one of the two. And then Tully with the uh, pile driver off the top rope. Tully going to go for the cover on Luchasaurus. One, two, three. Tully Blanchard picking up the win for FTR and himself tonight in the six-man tag against Jurassic Express tonight on AEW Dynamite. Split-screen commercial on NXT in the meantime. Hopefully we'll find out who the hell that is in that uh, mask. J.J. Dillon now going to get in the ring and celebrate as well, but FTR, Tully Blanchard defeating Jurassic Express tonight on AEW Dynamite. Actually a good match. Had to pause it there, you know, midway through, but um, yeah, ain't no stopping me now, and we're going to move on. So, Who the hell is that underneath of the Masso? Whoever the hell it is is now getting into the ring. Oh, shit. It's the perfect 10. Ty Dillinger, Sean Spears is, of course, he's got a new look. He's got some blonde hair, blonde mohawk, but... It seems like uh, Spears has joined with FTR. And Arn Anderson walks out like, all right, hmm, what the hell? He's pointing. And then he, he gives JJ and Tully the four for the four horsemen. They're just missing Flair and Bully. But Tony Schiavone now just walking onto the stage. Tony, it's all yours. What do we got coming up next? So Sean Spears has aligned himself once again with Tully Blanchard. As Tully's, at, well, at one point was managing both FTR and Spears. And then Spears has, you know, been nowhere to be seen as of late. Trying to figure out what the hell they're going to do with him. I mean, I actually like this. This isn't bad. But I had said for time and time again for months, 
that um, AW Dark Elevation, Shivani with an announcement on this. Oh, Paul White's going to come out because he's going to be uh, announcing with Shivani on that show on AW's uh, YouTube, I do believe. That'll debut here uh, in the next few weeks. The biggest athlete, the giant himself in pro wrestling. No more BS. Paul White is all in with all elite wrestling. Big Show is an AEW. No more BS. His new t-shirt I just saw a short time ago. Of course, no more BS, no more bullshit, but no more Big Show. Might have to get one of those. It's plain and simple. L.A. Knight, Eli Drake in the ring. Looks like he's just going to cut a promo. Somebody's probably going to come out and attack him. So the finish to that women's tag team championship match just for some reason or another on my end at least, or maybe because I had to pause there for a little bit and it caught up to itself and I didn't realize, L.A. Knight. More like, let me talk to you. My name's Eli Drake, dummy. Yeah. But um, unless that match just ended all of a sudden and then they, they cut to this, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But yeah, L.A. Knight, Eli Drake in the ring now on NXT. Big Show being uh, interviewed on AEW. He's happy to be in AEW. Welcome home. Back on TNT with Tony Schiavone, just like Sting. Paul White. He looks forward to, of course, working with the amazing talent in All Elite Wrestling. AEW Elevation. AEW Dark Elevation will be Shivani and show on commentary. Bronson Reed coming out to LA Night. So they tease a potential feud there with Eli Drake and Bronson Reed. Just so you know. He's going to take his uh, announcing job seriously. What do you mean? Big Show has the biggest scoop ever. This Sunday at Revolution, AEW. He's going to hire, or the the company is going to hire, give a contract to a Hall of Fame worthy superstar. And they're going to be coming to AEW. Who the hell could that be? Yeah. It's not who you think. But this Sunday... This Sunday, we're going to find out on who the hell AEW is about to sign. And he knew first before all of us, so he says. So they're going to now, in the meantime, after that, take a look at the bracket with some highlights for the uh, women's uh, eliminator tournament for the championship. Yeah, so Paul White, the big show, uh, announces that he's got a big scoop on AEW signing a Hall of Fame-worthy talent. Uh, Going to give whoever the hell it is a contract this Sunday at Revolution. Hall of Fame-worthy talent. Who could it be? Let me know in the comments below your opinion. I'm going to have to do some thinking, potentially some digging as well, uh, on who the hell it could be. Uh, Bronson Reed taking on uh, what looks to be uh, Cameron Grimes. However, tonight, as we move on with AW Dynamite, get back uh, here with the show. All right, we got uh, Vicky Guerrero coming out with Nala Rose. She's managing her. They really haven't done anything with Nyla as of late, but they still got to figure out the Sam Williams division, for God's sake. Britt Baker's the face. Nowhere we've seen tonight. Um, her and uh, Thunder Rosa both lost in the tournament, but uh, if one of those two, 
as Nyla's already been champion, Sheeta's been champion for how long? If Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa, especially Britt Baker, for God's sakes, um, is not AW Women's champion uh, by the end of 2021, there's something wrong. Because if, if they don't figure out their women's division by the end of the year, they, they don't have a women's division. They won't ever have a women's division. I get it takes time to build it, but you've been a company now for almost two years, and you still don't have a women's division at this point. Absolutely pathetic. Absolutely fucking pathetic. So, I'll leave it at that. But, yeah, coming up next, uh, yeah, as we get back to uh, normal, for tonight at least, uh, get back uh, with our head on straight, um, we got uh, Nather Rose and Ryo Mizunami in the finals for the AW Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament, where the winner will, in fact, face Sheeta this Sunday Revolution for that AW uh, Women's uh, Championship, as Sheeta is also ringside as well for this. Nyla's probably going to win, unless they're going to give this Mizunami from Japan a run in AEW, as they've done with a few other talents in the past, or not. We'll see. But yeah, it's uh, on NXT now in the meantime, back from their commercial break. Bronson Reed and Cameron Grimes in singles competition. I'm going to see if I can um, find out uh, if, in fact, as the bell rings for this women's match on AEW, the finals of their respective current tournament that they have going on, um, if the last women's match on NXT... Um, with Nia and Shayna versus Dakota Kai and Rico Gonzalez just ended all of a sudden. Because I believe it did. Um, but I could be wrong. I'm going to uh, check here real quick. Yeah, so Shane, Nia and Shayna won. And I guess what they're going to do, storyline-wise at least, potentially give some air to the WWE Women's Tag Team titles moving forward. They're saying Postman Pierce, Adam Pierce, and Monday Night Raw screwed NXT um, because Dakota Kai was not legal, even though she was pinned. Or, or submitted to Shayna, allowing Nye and Shayna to retain those titles. Yeah, so we didn't miss much there. It just it skipped ahead over there for a second for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I guess we went back to therapy in the meantime, too. But not a whole lot happened there. And then LA Knight, Eli Drake was in the ring. Um, you know, Bronson Reed came out. Um... And now we got Bronson Reed and Cameron Grimes. So, yeah, we're caught up. We didn't miss much. I don't know why the hell that did that, but just more technical difficulties. I mean, it's technology for you. Not really that big of a deal. We're going to miss a whole lot. But, I mean, just to know what the hell's going on, of course, you'd like to know that, especially moving ahead. So, just wanted to uh, sum that up, get caught up there for a second, just so I know personally. Big suicide dive there from Bronson to Cameron Grimes. Takes his hat off as well in the process. But uh, Mizunami with a pin on Nyla. Kick out at one. We'll see who wins this. I mean, I could really care less. Because whoever the hell wins, probably still going to lose the sheet on Sunday anyway. I want to be shocked, though, if they would win the title. Because they need to figure out their women's vision. They do. Because they do not have a women's vision whatsoever. They might say they do, but they don't. And they know they don't. And like I said, two years uh, as a company here almost. Absolutely pathetic that they don't have a woman's vision. Here comes uh, Eli Drake, L.A. Knight out to interfere. He's actually ringside now. Cameron Grimes with a stomp cover on Bronson. Helping out Cameron Grimes pick up the win. One, two, three. So Cameron Grimes defeating Bronson Reed. After an Eli Drake, L.A. Knight uh, interference. And yeah... They teased uh, Eli and Bronson, and it seems to be uh, they're out they'll be taken here. 
coming up shortly with Eli Drake, Elliot Knight, and Bronson Reed. Cameron Grimes says thank you. And uh, they're going to take a split screen on AEW in the meantime, too. So we're not going to fast uh, forward. We're not going to move ahead in the action just because we're behind. We're going to keep it uh, with where it's at um, just so we can stay on the, the two-hour, well, over two-hour um, time for both AEW and NXT as a show. And then the uh, preview prediction for Evolution at the end. Stay tuned. Meantime in NXT, we got uh, an interview with Caden Carter. As Casey Catanzaro uh, posted a picture on her uh, social media about her knee. However, we just saw Adam Pearce and William Regal getting into it backstage uh, in their office, it looked like. So maybe at some point in time we get you know, an NXT invasion of some sorts on Raw or SmackDown. You know, for NXT saying that Raw screwed over, you know, NXT talent in a championship match tonight. Uh, I'm still just thinking, you know, like, uh, who the hell is AEW going to be signing on Sunday? Who the hell is going to appear? Uh, who the hell will be the, uh, how they put it again? What Big Show say? A Hall of Fame worthy talent. That's right. That he knows about. We don't, of course, but he knows. And when it happens, he's gonna, um, or would have already knew about it. And you know, in the meantime, and then we'll be in shock. Meantime, you know, we're trying to figure out who it is. But yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Who the hell could it be, honestly? That. Big Show has the scoop on that AEW uh, is, in fact, uh, offering contracts, signing a Hall of Fame-worthy talent to the company. Who could it be? That's the big question right now for the Big Show, now known as his real uh, name, Paul White, in AEW after leaving the uh, WWE. So... Um, We'll see what happens there. Uh, I'm just trying to think of some free agents, some Hall of Famers um, in the world of pro wrestling. And then, you know, we'll go from there, honestly. So, yeah. I mean, there's not much else to say. Other than AEW will be signing a Hall of Fame worthy talent this Sunday at Revolution. So, who could it be? Who? Big E of the New Day? Who? No. Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston, who of the New Day? No. No. Who? Who? Hoot? No. Um, I'm going to have to, you know, as mentioned, get to thinking and do some digging here. But, um, yeah, just uh, interesting to say the least that they're going to keep us on the edge of our seats, you know, keep us guessing with um, what they got in store potentially uh, for all of us on Sunday at Revolution. Uh, so, We'll see, but um, a Hall of Fame worthy town. I'm going to have to, like I guess, do some thinking, do some digging. But um, commercial break NXT, this women's match still going on on AEW. I'm not really that into it. Just I wasn't with the WWE Women's Tag Team title match either. Maybe that's why I missed the ending to all that. But. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens here moving forward. And I don't want anybody saying it's going to be, uh, you know, somebody who's currently signed to the WWE. Uh, that's a Hall of Famer that 
whether their contract's coming to an end or not, that like is actually wrestling on their uh, TV product right now that's going to be coming in. But we just saw Big Show within a little over a month and a half after his last on Raw announce, you know, he's going to AEW and he's on Dynamite tonight. So, um, we'll see. It probably has to do, um, with WCW. Somebody that has been in the big shows past has history with show. Um, to say the least, I mean, that's what I'm thinking right now. You know, you got to go back to the late '90s, early 2000s. I mean, maybe even DDP. Even after he's already been on TV a few times in AEW. Uh, but I'm thinking, you know, somebody from, you know, back late '90s, early 2000s. Um, you know, WCW days that has history with Big Show. For him to give. Um, an announcement like that, especially just coming into the company, if they're going to have him wrestle, which he will, because Big Show Hell, he just wrestled last year in the WWE for God's sakes, how many times? So his his main um, product, his his main job uh, moving forward is going to be uh, announcing with Shivani on AEW Dark Elevation, which AEW really is now going to be on three nights a week. Monday night for AW Dark Elevation on their YouTube at 7 p.m. Uh, I believe it's their YouTube because AW Dark is already on their YouTube Tuesday nights at 7, which will stay put. And then Dynamite's on Wednesday nights. So, WWE's on three nights a week. AW's now going to be on three nights a week. I mean, YouTube, you can watch that anytime on demand, of course. Um, but because they don't have their own network by any means, like they, they're building up their YouTube as, you know, I'm trying to here as well. So be sure to subscribe, but maybe Bret Hart, maybe, maybe, uh, the Hitman, you know, is coming in. He, uh, announced or he brought out the world title at, uh, double or nothing there two years ago in Vegas when they had their, or at all out that August or, you know, whenever the hell they did it. Um, you know, but honestly, Bret Hart could be, you know, another one of those potential candidates for uh, this uh, new role in AEW for what Big Show once more uh, announced as a Hall of Fame worthy talent. Now, now I named off, I know I just named off, you know, a few uh, Hall of Famers. But Hall of Fame worthy is, you know, a, a different category. Maybe it's somebody up and coming or somebody that's been around that's, of course, worthy for the Hall of Fame that hasn't got in yet. So there's a few different meanings to it. So we'll see what they do. But of the, the few that I just named off, you know, with uh, Bret Hart and DDP, just because they, of course, have been with the company before in the past and have some history with Big Show, you know, maybe. Over the course of the next, you know, half hour, 45 minutes or so, though, we'll see if we can, you know, potentially think of a few others. Um, because, like I said, Hall of Fame and then Hall of Fame worthy, which is how they stated it, you know, with with the meanings, um, you know, it really could be anybody. It could be somebody that's going to, you know, shock the world. Or it could be somebody that, you know, none of us are going to give a shit about. We'll see. Um, hopefully they hit it big, though, and uh, bring in another free agent. That's, of course, Hall of Fame worthy in their eyes to the company. And uh, we'll, um, make AEW even better than what it already is. But only time is going to tell. But that will be on Sunday at Revolution. In the meantime, as mentioned, we had at uh, Therapy with Jar... Johnny Gargano in the way. We had Theory talking with a therapist. And... Yeah, then he, like, uh, walked out crying. Gargano came back in, like, getting in her face, bitching and complaining, like, you made him cry, like, what the hell. And then he paid her. Paid her in cash, but then he took some money back. Um, 
So we'll see if they keep that going moving forward or not with Johnny Gargano and the way. Don't want to stumble over that uh, any more than what I just did. Excuse me for that. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there, uh, especially with, you know, the NXT and NXT North American titles over the next few weeks or so. Um, after that, Ever Rise in the ring, they just got beat the hell down by uh, Legato Del Fantasma, Senses Escobar, now on the mic as he's your NXT Cruiserweight Champion. Faced off versus Karen Cross recently for that title. Or actually, it ended up being a non title match. And it was a um, street fight, if I do believe, if I'm mistaken, right? Or no, no DQ match. Uh, yeah, it was supposed to be Ever Eyes and what looks like. Uh, Breeze and Fondongo, Breezongo, as they're dressed as astronauts. So they're going back that route with them. Next week on NXT, Zia Lee and Caden Carter. Of course, this goes back to just last week with uh, Casey Catanzaro's knee being injured. Also next week, NXT is AW's at a commercial break right now. The NXT Women's Championship will be on the line. Live, Io Shirai defending that championship against Tony Storm. Finn Balor, Adam Cole for the NXT Championship next Wednesday night as well. That's a big match. However, we got Balor and Roderick Strong, I do believe, as mentioned earlier, still to come tonight in tonight's main event. So next week on NXT, two championship matches. One being Io Shirai and Tony Storm for the NXT Women's Championship, and then Finn Balor defending his NXT Championship against Adam Cole, baby, on the road to the next NXT TakeOver event. Uh, rumored to be, you know, around WrestleMania season next month sometime. So we'll see what happens there. Video package hyping up uh, Balor and Cole now as we uh, are still at a commercial break with AEW. As mentioned with technical difficulties earlier, uh, not by any means whatsoever. Fast forward and getting caught, caught up here. We are uh, a little behind, um, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so, but we're still side-by-side side live with AEW and NXT this evening, so thank you for tuning in and listening. But um, Finn Balor versus Adam Cole next week on NXT for the NXT Championship. That's a big main of that match. However, coming up next on AEW Dynamite, the crossroads before Revolution on Sunday, we got Tony Schiavone in the middle of the ring. Uh, we got Team Taz and uh, Sting and Darby Allen on Sunday in a street fight. Shivani going to interview Sting once again. That's getting annoying. Real easy. Real quick. It's real easy, I should say. Uh, very easy. Uh, to get annoyed by when he, you know, keeps doing it all the time. You know, it's one of those that doesn't take long, you know, to just shut the hell up with how he how he says it, too. I don't care about the history with it. It doesn't make a difference. It just, it's so annoying anymore. And here we go again. Sting going to be interviewed uh, by... You know, Shivani once more. Because he hasn't wrestled yet with AEW. His uh, first ever match with All Elite Wrestling will be on Sunday at Revolution in tag team competition with Sting and Darby Allen taking on Team Taz, Brian Cage, and Ricky Starks. And with Brian Cage, as I said time and time again, he hasn't done a damn thing since last May with that FTW championship. Absolutely ridiculous. The booking's good in some parts, but then the other booking for everything else that you know, just floating around, it, it's it's bad. Especially the women's division. Not bad for everything else, but the women's division, going back to that, it's awful. So Sting cutting a promo now in the middle of the ring on AEW Dynamite, but um, still trying to figure out maybe the, the big signing, you know, AEW is going to be bringing in, offering a contract, the Hall of Fame-worthy talent, going to be uh, up Sting's road as well. 
have history with him. It has to make sense, though. And hopefully they home run with it. But, you know, like I said, if we can think of a few more here before the end of the show, we'll, we'll get into that, too. I have a few ideas, but I don't know if I want to speak so soon on them or, or not as of yet. Because, you know, like I said, Hall of Fame and then Hall of Fame worthy. You know, Hall of Fame, of course, you're Hall of Famer. Hall of Fame worthy, to me at least. Hall of Fame worthy is, like, you're good, but at this point in time, you're still just not good enough to be in the Hall of Fame. Whether you're a legend, you know, somebody who's been around, um, or, you know, somebody who's still active, that's, you know, damn good talent. So, we'll see. So, Ricky Stark's coming out, talking back to Sting now. As NXT's at a commercial break, Starks with a slap right across the face to Sting. Sting going to fight back now, and all hell's going to break loose. As Shivani gets out of the ring. So, coming up next on NXT, it looks like um, it'll be Finn Balor and Roderick Strong before Balor defends that title next Wednesday night on NXT against Adam Cole, baby. As NXT, for the most part, has been an all-right show. Nothing spectacular. But they're in the middle of uh, the road right now for one takeover to another. As AEW's at a crossroads right now, too. But it's a go-home. It's a go-home for a pay-per-view, which is on Sunday, AEW Revolution. So, however, we still got a few more matches for Dynamite tonight, too. Caster in Dark Order number 10. Uh, tag team with uh, Hardy and Adam Page, uh, and then well, we I would added you know the Sting segment in with Darby Allen as well, but this is taking place now, right now. So here comes uh, Taz and Brian Cage. Cage gonna give another uh, power bomb to Sting. No, here comes Darby Allen from behind as his music hits. Now on the back of Brian Cage like a little kid, choking him out. William Regal. Now walking backstage being interviewed. Uh, What's Regal got to say? Excuse me. Darby Allen drop kick off the top rope. Regal walks into his office without saying much. See if we can get an update on that potentially. But um they hype up the street fight with Team Taz, Sting, and Darby Allen a little bit more as Team Taz comes out and attacks Sting following his interview and his promo. But then, um, even after that, um, Darby Allen with the saves. So, yeah, that's. That segment, we've got a few more matches in AEW with the main event of NXT about to begin. So, um, NXT next week, yeah, loaded show. Let's see if we can get an update on what uh, what Regal just said. Didn't really say much, but maybe it was something on NXT. Takeover or NXT's move to Tuesday. Um, but uh, yeah, tonight's been all over the place, especially after those uh, technical difficulties a uh, short time ago. Um, still trying to get back on straight here, but um, hey, this is live as live can get. You got to work through it. Okay, William Regal next week. As he was interviewed backstage, he had said, yeah, because of what happened in the Women's Championship match tonight, he's going to make an announcement next week that will change NXT. I would assume just not for the Women's Championship, as it will be you, Shirai, and Tony Storm. They're going to hold off on another uh, week here or so. William Regal, uh, he will be... Next week on WWE NXT, making an announcement that will change NXT. So I would, you know, have to assume there that that's going to be the announcement of 
the next NXT TakeOver along with if they're even going to have another TakeOver coming up here shortly or not. But more so than not, the, the announcement of NXT moving from Wednesdays to uh, Tuesdays. Maybe even both, like I said. We'll see. But Balor and Strong now underway. It should be a good match. Finn Balor, Roderick Strong. Hashtag WWE NXT. I know you don't like me, you know, bitching and complaining about the technical difficulties, but, um, you know, there's only so much I can do personally on my end uh, to get through with, you know, this audio recording tonight. Because, you know, as I always say, it's technology. It's good, but then also sucks when we need it to be good. So, um, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here momentarily as we come back now from commercial break in AEW. Here come the Dark Order. So, it'll be Hangman and Page with John Silver taking on Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn of Private Party. And then two separate tag teams... Or actually, it'll be Dark Order's 10. Preston Vance with uh, Brody Lee Jr. It'll be uh, Dark Order 10 with um, Max Caster, who the hell he is. Um, you know, sort of like uh, as Scorpio Sky's now on commentary. Sky's already in the ladder match. Um... Dark Order 10 wins this. He'll be in the ladder match as well. Brody Lee Jr. by his side. Uh, but Max Caster is like Griff Garrison. Like, who the fuck's Griff Garrison? Like, who the fuck's Matt Caster? Okay. It's not MJF. But, um... Oh, he's from the Acclaimed. Okay. One half of the Acclaimed. So, Preston Vance, Dark Order 10 is going to win this. And then, as I was saying, two tag teams of the Dark Order are in the Battle Royal, uh, Tag Team Battle Royal on the uh, buy-in on the kickoff pre-show, which we'll get more into in a minute as well. So, no Matt Hardy, Hangman, Adam Page tag team match right now with Hardy in the private party and Page in the Dark Order. Uh, it'll be Caster of the Acclaimed with... Um, now, I know who the Acclaimed are. I just didn't know personally Max Caster... That's what his name was. Because they really haven't done singles with uh, the Acclaimed yet. Until now. Um, seems like AEW is behind. But I am watching NXT on a different TV. And it's like... Of course, skipped ahead now. They're like 20 minutes or so ahead even though I was watching them side by side. So NXT's now come to an end. Uh, yeah, this did this last month for me whenever uh, I did what I'm doing now. But um, Balor defeats Strong and then Adam Cole comes out. Balor points him down and then Cole does the boom. And that closes out NXT tonight. Okay. It wasn't that bad. NXT could have been a little bit better. Um, but, you know, like I said, AEW's got to go home tonight right now. So, nine times out of ten, that's how it's always going to be. Like, when NXT's got to go home for a takeover, AEW normally isn't as hot. It is, but it isn't. Um, I'm just happy now, moving ahead, if NXT is moving to Tuesdays, we're not going to... Uh, have to watch both of these side by side at the same time. We can watch, you know, as it was before, NXT for the hour, NXT for the two hours by itself, and then AEW, you know, for the two hours by itself on separate nights. And then you get a clearer look. You only have to worry about one thing, one show. Um, you know, and then wrestling's still on every night of the week as it is now anyway, so Impact gets screwed. They'll probably get a Thursdays, I bet. But, you know, yeah, so a lot going on as always. Um, I don't even really know what I was saying there, but um, well, I know who they claimed. Yeah, they are. But Max Caster as a singles competitor, no, personally, don't know. Uh, but he's facing off against Preston Vance, Dark Horde number ten right now, 
And this is actually a qualifying match, as we get back on track for a time being at least, for the Face of the Revolution ladder match on Sunday. Now, they did this last year for... Um, well, they, they've done ladder matches in the past, but as any wrestling company has. But with what I'm about to say here, they did this last uh, May for Double or Nothing. And this is when Brian Cage uh, debuted. It was a uh, ladder match. wasn't a Money in the Bank ladder match, of course, even though Jericho invented that. And then Miz cashed in, and then Lashley is now champion. But um, they're going to take another pitcher and pitcher on AEW Dynamite. As for some reason, I must be behind, even though I kept pausing them at the same time. But this is what it did last month for Beach Break and NXT that night as well, with an audio-only recording. Not actual live stream with video, audio only, and then upload the next day. Um, so I'll have to figure that out, why that's doing that. Because they're on at the same time. I mean, maybe the commercials just aren't as long. I don't know, but AEW's still going here. And NXT, like I said, I had them both paused at the same time, and NXT ends early, about 20 minutes or so earlier. Just interesting. Some things are frustrating and hard to understand, though, too. So, I'll leave it at that. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. NXT was average tonight at best. But a good finish. They tease, of course, next week, which we'll have to tune back in for that. Finn Balor defending his NXT championship uh, against Adam Cole. But this qualifier match for the Face of the Revolution ladder match on Sunday. Winner of this with Caster and Dark Order 10 will be the next-to-last entry. And then they'll still have one more entry uh, for that because there's still two participants to be determined. So whoever wins this will be in and then somebody else. But what I'm about to say here, you know, like I said, Double or Nothing when Cage, um, you know, debuted and then he became FTW champion, joined Team Taz. They haven't done shit with him since. You know, all that since since then, coming up on a year now, it was a ladder match at that pay-per-view. I believe it was the opening uh, match of the night. And he was like the mystery person. He came out and won. and He won a briefcase of some sorts. It was a contract for a championship opportunity, I do believe. Um, so maybe to wrap this up, sum it all up, you know, circle around. Whoever the Hall of Fame worthy, you know, superstar candidate is that Big Show's bringing and that he knows all about will be that seventh and final competitor in this ladder match potentially we'll see uh i know i'm you know going on and on about it trying to just i'm thinking off the top of my head as i always do trying to you know figure this all out um just tr- tr- trying to think on honestly who could it be um especially in a ladder match if that's the case um you know because like i said hopefully it'll make a, a be a good fit, and, you know, make good for the company that they could, you know, use moving forward, of course, because they're not going to sign somebody and then not use them. Um, unless you're, you know, who, but, um, and then at that point, okay, you release them, but, and everything happens for a reason, I get it. Um, but yeah, we got this going on right now, and then. If they even do have Matt Hardy and Adam Hangman, Adam Page, um, in tag team with Mark Quinn and John Silver, that'll be the main event because there's nothing else advertised uh, for Dynamite this evening. Everything else they've gone through. And then we'll still preview uh, Revolution on Sunday real quick here at the end. Um, as I continue to think on who the hell could be the Hall of Fame worthy uh, superstar wrestler that AEW is bringing in on Sunday at Revolution. And once more, let me know in the comments below who you think it could be. But yeah, the uh, Face of the Revolution ladder match, as I mentioned earlier, the winner of that then on Sunday will receive a uh, TNT Championship match. And those participants as of now are Cody Rhodes, Scorpio Sky, who's on commentary, you know, Penta, who did not participate in the tag team earlier with Pac and uh, Ray Phoenix. Um, who else we got? Lance Archer, the winner of this match, and then somebody else. Uh, so I would think if they're going to give Ten a, a run, give him a push, maybe him, 
have him win it. But then whoever the hell the mystery person is going to be, if they're going to, in fact, be in that ladder match, okay. We'll we'll see. But, um, yeah, that's NXT and AEW summed up for, you know, up to this point for the time being. Um, so we'll see what AEW does here to uh, close out the night with Revolution once again on Sunday. But, um, yeah, that's that. That's one of the final Wednesday night uh, wars that we've called them, you know, since they started almost two years ago come October. Elbow off the top rope misses. But, yeah, really, it was us fans who won, not, you know, each company, even though both companies did too with the promotions. You know, watching AEW and NXT side by side together at the same time every Wednesday night for almost two years straight. Like, yeah, hell yeah. So, kick out at two with a rope break with, uh, A foot on the bottom rope to break the count. Maybe Scorpio Sky wins. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. Um, give him a singles run. Because uh, Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels as SCU really aren't doing anything right now as a tag team. And then Jack Evans of the Hybrid 2 with a stereo of some sorts. Right to the face of uh, Dark Order 10, cover 1, 2, 3. And Max Caster picks up the win. Caster defeats Vance, number 10 of the Dark Order. And Caster now in the face of the Revolution ladder match on Sunday. So we still have one participant uh, to figure out in that match. Along with who the Hall of Fame worthy uh, signee is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens there. Now we got Matt Hardy with a envelope with uh, Mr. Jack Evans' name on it with a, a cash amount as Big Money Matt pays off uh, the Hybrid 2 with the acclaimed to take out Preston Vance number 10 of the Dark Order. And that, you know, runs into the Hardy Hangman Adam Page story right now with Hardy and Private Party and Page in the Dark Order. AW Dark this Saturday on YouTube. All right. And then Revolution is on Sunday. On the buy in, they'll have an add in match here Thunder Rosa and Rio in tag team action versus Dr. Britt Baker, DMD herself, and Reba. So that should be a good match. Add that on into the show for Revolution on Sunday. Miro and Kip Sabian as well against uh, best friends Orange Cassidy and uh, Sir Charles Chuck Taylor. Miro cut a promo now backstage on Dynamite tonight. Miro and uh, Kip are going to win that, I would think. Now, if they don't, uh, Miro is probably going to turn on them. Maybe um, Trent Beretta even returns. Uh, there as well. I mean, this goes back to the uh, wedding last month, the beach break with um, Kip and Penelope Ford. So, game over instead of crush for Rusev now Miro in AEW. It'll be game over for Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor, Sir Charles, the Butler, Miro and Kip versus best friends, and then if the face of the Revolution ladder match. The winner will get a shot at the TNT title. Uh, with everyone involved in that. And then Paul White will make an announcement regarding AEW's next major signing is how they're putting it now. Uh, Shida uh, going to take on uh, Mizunama, uh, Mizunami as well after she defeated Nala Rose earlier tonight too. Matt Hardy and Hangman Adam Page in the big uh, money match. Uh, straight fight with Team Taz, Sting and Darby Allin. And then the Casino Tag Team Battle Royale uh, with everyone involved in that. The AW World Tag Team Championships will also be on the line with the Young Bucks in the inner circle with Matt and Nick Jackson, the Bucks of Youth, 
and Jericho and MJF in the inner circle. And then in the main event, in the AW World Heavyweight Championship match, an exploding uh, barbed wire death match, it'll be the cleaner, Kenny Omega, defending his AW World title against John Moxley. Coming up next, though, however, they announce after Dynamite tonight, a countdown to Revolution. However, tonight's main event, yeah, they're going to give uh, Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn the truth is the truth. Can't get any more clearer, truer than that. The truth is the truth. Big Money Matt, Matt Hardy, and Mark Quinn of Private Party are going to take on Hangman Adam Page and John Silver in tag team action in tonight's AW Dynamite main event during tonight's crossroads before Revolution. Hangman's going to be the new leader of the Dark Order, it looks like. And I, I said going back after Brody passed that, um, which still can't get over, that, uh, you know, Hangman and Matt Hardy would be my top two picks. And you can go back and look it up. That's what I said, among a few others. Those are my top two. Uh, whether they were that order or not, they were the top two um, to be the new leader, potentially, of the Dark Order moving forward. And we've had this feud with Hangman and Hardy since, and they'll have a big money match on Sunday with the loser losing his first quarter earnings uh, here in 2021, which, of course, that's just storyline. They're going to, you know, do that. Um, but big money Matt. We haven't seen big money Matt Matt Hardy in, in quite a while, going back to TNA. Um, and even before that, uh, with all his gimmicks throughout the years, you know, with, um, you know, WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, um, and now in AEW, or back to uh, WWE and now in AEW. I mean, the broken Matt Hardy, of course, has been his biggest, but he's big money Matt right now. So, big money match on Sunday. However, in tonight's Dynamite main event, it'll be Hardy and Mark Quinn and Private Party taking on Hangman and Page and John Silver of the Dark Order. And then they'll hype up Hardy and Hangman for Sunday at Revolution. So, depending on what happens here, you would think we're going to know who wins on Sunday then. I mean, right now I'm thinking Hangman's going to you know, be winning right now anyway. Cheap shot from... Um, Matt Hardy. Cheap shot from Matt Hardy to John Silver in the corner. Tag made. So Matt Hardy and John Silver are your legal competitors right now. Maybe Brody isn't dead. You know? Just wish that. Maybe he's going to be the next major signing for AEW as they're putting it out to be now. You know, he's going to come back from the dead. I think everyone would love that. You know, the Dark Order's just where they left off. That'd be a huge swerve. A huge ass swerve. I would love that, but of course, not going to happen, unfortunately. Right here, right now, says JR. We're going to take another picture and picture uh, split screen commercial break. Hashtag AW Dynamite, hashtag WWNXT once more. Um, with NXT ending early, 20 minutes earlier than expected, on my end at least. Uh, recording this live, watching both AEW and NXT side by side tonight. For one of the final times before the NXT move, uh, rumored to be at least two Tuesday nights. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here moving forward, as always. Future's bright, as I always say, anyway, so. And it's not like I'm not going to be watching. I'll be tuning in as I tune in all the time anyway and watch them, so. Uh, AEW Dynamite main event with uh, Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn of Private Party with Hangman Adam Page once more and John Silver. Just awaiting the uh, return from split screen commercial break to the close out tonight's show. But in the meantime, I guess, you know, yeah, we could talk a little bit about Revolution, which is on Sunday. Um,. So, if I remember, I'm going to put in uh, in the description, of course, where my uh, AW Revolution preview predictions uh, do in fact begin in this, you know, two hour plus 
um, with what's going to be a two hour plus uh, live stream, live reaction, audio only, of course, live right here on YouTube um, here tonight. So just thank you once again for tuning in and listening. But if I remember, I'll, I'll put in the description the timestamp, as I like to call them, where in fact those pre predictions begin. So it'll probably be, you know, because we just hit the two hour mark. Um, probably within the next five minutes or so. So, yeah, probably about 2.05, I bet, is where we'll begin. Maybe even a little after that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, for where those pre predictions begin. But we got a uh, battle royal, a tag team battle royal. We got uh, championship matches, of course. And uh, the main event. The women's, the tag team, even the mid card. Uh, well, not as of yet. We also got a ladder match that will determine the new number one contender for the mid card title that Darby Allen currently holds. Got a street fight uh, along with a big money match. So then the main event. You know, like I said, with the, the main title being the AW World Heavyweight Championship. An exploding barbed wire death match that's going to have everyone talking Sunday night into Monday morning. So we'll see what happens at Revolution on Sunday. But back now from the split screen commercial break to close out Dynamite tonight. Once more, Hardy and Mark Quinn and Private Party taking on Hangman Adam Page and John Silver of the Dark Order in tonight's tag team main event before the big money match on Sunday with Hangman and Matt Hardy. Hardy and John Silver still legal. Cover one, two, kick out. Hangman trying to get a hot tag here. They'll probably end up winning this. And then he'll probably get screwed on Sunday. But maybe he stands tall. Because like I said, I mean, you stand tall anymore. It really doesn't matter. In my eyes, at least, it doesn't. Because, I mean, it happens sometimes. But the other, you know, a few times, of course not. But, um, you know, he could stand tall and then still win. With, with the way this match is going, Hangman's going to get a hot tag, clothesline Matt Hardy, they'll stand tall, and then probably lose on Sunday. But I'm thinking, you know, Hangman's going to win because it will put him over even more. Because Matt Hardy's putting over talent as well. You know, because Matt Hardy doesn't need, you know, to be top dog anymore. He doesn't need to be the new leader of the Dark Order. He you know, doesn't need to be, but they might put him there. You know, keyword. Um, you know, Hangman needs it more than anything. You know, because I still see him, as I've said the past two years. You know, he's the future of the company. It's just they haven't gotten to a point in which, you know, in a feud and a story that he's had the chance to go over and you know be top dog. Other than, of course, as he tags in actually. Hangman Adam Page and Mark Quinn. You know, he faced Jericho for the title all out in the first ever championship match for AEW. Lost. Was in the elite until he got kicked out. Um, and then, you know, floating around until he was feuding with the Dark Order. And then Brody unexpectedly passes away uh, due to a, once again, non-COVID-19 uh, lung issue. And... You know, from then on until now, it's Hangman and Matt Hardy as your top two candidates, potentially, as I stated uh, numerous times for the new leadership of the Dark Order. And it looks like Hangman's going to get it. But we'll see Hangman over the top rope taking out Matt Hardy now ringside. Hangman and Big Money Matt. If you got a lot of big money, you're probably hanging, man. But at the same time, you know, if you got big tires, you know where, 
you, you probably don't have a big money in, well, you know where. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Matt Hardy is going to tag in. Hangman wants him. I swear to God, I'm bugged. Shivani just said, Hangman wants Matt Hardy. Two seconds after I said it. Like, come on. Hangman going to go for a DDT now. Vertical suplex. Mark Wen reverses. Uh, chop block to the back of the left knee with a drop kick. And then Hardy going to tag in. So now Hangman getting Matt Hardy. Neck breaker. And Matt Hardy. Delete, delete, delete the Hangman. Going to go for a DDT. Twist of fate. No. Hangman picks him up, slams him down. And then... Hangman gonna throw Mark Quinn over the top rope. Tag made. Here comes John Silver. John Silver, the spear to Matt Hardy. Holy shit. Silver's like two foot tall. Twist of fate. No. Quick roll up. No. Kick from John Silver. All right. John Silver. Gee, oh, he just, oh, right on his head. Vertical suplex, one, two, three. Shit. Matt Hardy's lucky to have a neck right now that's still not broken. He literally dropped him right on his head. That, oh, God. Take a look back at that. Here comes a Matt Hardy. Suplex to John Silver. Hardy going to tag in Mark Quinn. Mark Quinn off the top rope. Going to go for a splash. John Silver actually gets up. Where's Hangman at, though? Actually, a drop kick off the top rope. Hangman's nowhere to be found now. Hangman now up on the ring apron. Silver with a kick. Hangman tags in. Mark Quinn doesn't realize it. And then uh, big right hand from Hangman. And then a power bomb. Hangman gonna go for the big clothesline here after a suplex from Silver. And the buckshot lariat, as they call it, the clothesline from Hell. Cover one, two, three. Hangman, Adam Page, and John Silver defeat Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn tonight to close out AEW Dynamite. Hangman Adam Page with the buckshot clothesline. Uh, and then uh, cover one, two, three. Matt Hardy now on the mic, beating down Hangman. So Hangman picks up the win. But then Hardy with the beat down afterwards. So Hardy going to stand tall. So Hangman's still going to win on Sunday, I think. This is all just a setup. You're not going to make it to Revolution. Big money Matt in full control here. Post-match, of course. But here come the Dark Order. Dark Order beating the hell out of Matt Hardy now. So, you know, maybe Matt Hardy will win because they're standing tall now. But like I said, that really doesn't matter a whole lot. But now here come the Butcher and the Blade. Uh, Luther. Here's everyone else that's in this tag team battle royal now on Sunday. We got, uh, Jesus Christ, there's all these different tag teams now in the ring with Brody Lee Jr. at the top of the entrance. I see Dustin Rhodes. There's SCU. Um, who else we got in there? Actually, somebody's music just hit. I don't know if they're having trouble with the uh, graphics tonight or not for entrances because they really haven't been playing them. Pillman Jr. with Griff Garrison are out there. But uh, as they close out AW Dynamite tonight, on the crossroads to Revolution, they, um, 
And now we've got a countdown to Revolution coming up next. Uh, they uh, have it uh, end with all the uh, tag teams in the Tag Team Battle Royal on Sunday Revolution going to town on one another with uh, Matt Hardy escaping, you know, uh, by the skin of his ass. So, um, don't really know what to think there. I mean, they got him on the show tonight, right at the tail end. All the tag teams. Don't even know who the hell was out there. I saw tag teams in the ring there to close out the show that aren't even in the match on Sunday. Um, so we'll see if, you know, there's a change in that with tag teams being pulled, you know, have some replacements, or if they're going to even just keep adding on with all the tag teams in the Battle Royal, as I believe there's seven or eight already announced, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but in the main event, Hangman picks up the win. Clothesline, cover one, two, three. Matt Hardy then beats him down post-match before he gets beat down by the Dark Order, and then all the tag teams that are in this Battle Royal on Sunday come out and, you know, all hell just broke loose to close out the show. So that's both AEW Dynamite and WWE NXT this evening. Um, NXT, of course, ended on my end at least a little earlier than expected for some unknown reason. Yeah, I was having some technical difficulties, but there's no reason uh, for what happened to have had happened. Um, to say the least, because, you know, whenever I was having those, I, I paused them both at the same time as I was watching them side by side, as I always do, and then NXT, for some reason, just sped up and it closed out early, just as it did, though, last month, whenever I was doing audio-only live reactions. But I'll play live right here on YouTube. That, of course, will be uploaded next day, tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Be sure to thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't done so already. But uh, NXT tonight, average at best, um... William Regal going to have an announcement, I guess, now next week uh, that's going to change NXT, which obviously has something to do with um, the next NXT TakeOver, along with uh, NXT moving from Wednesdays to uh, Tuesday nights. Um, until that's official, of course, it's still all rumored. Um, so they're just going to hold off for another week, it seems like, and Regal's going to have that now next week. Um... NXT tonight, though, you know, like I said, all right, average at best, nothing really spectacular. But they did announce uh, for next week they're going to have two championship matches. Io Shirai will defend her NXT Women's Championship against Tony Storm. And then we're also going to get the Prince Finn Balor defending his NXT Championship against Adam Cole, baby. So NXT should be good next week. Uh, better than what it was tonight. Both AEW and NXT are always good, but, you know, some nights one show is better than the other. Just because of, with everything going on, I get you got to build to the next week and the next week and the next week. Keep people coming back, of course. Um, but AEW with a go home tonight and then, you know, a, a few days removed next week from the pay-per-view on the road to Double or Nothing, uh, you know, Memorial Day. So, Revolution, they'll have two and a half months to build. Uh, towards that, as I'll get on the road to that next week. Um, but uh, yeah, NXT, all right tonight. Long story short, uh, with William Regal going to have an announcement next week, it seems like, uh, with the next NXT takeover, potentially along with the NXT move from Wednesdays to Tuesday nights once more. And then next week, we'll have Io Shirai and Tony Storm and... Uh, Finn Balor and Adam Cole in championship matches. But tonight on AEW Dynamite, a Crossroads edition for Revolution on Sunday, uh, we saw Shaq and Jade Cargill defeat Cody Rhodes in Red Velvet. Shaq with, of course, his uh, involvement with Turner. He's worked for TNT for quite some time with the NBA. Um, Cody, it made sense. It was supposed to be Cody and Brandy versus Shaq and Jade, but Brandy's pregnant. Uh, so, of course, she's not going to be wrestling. But um, Cody's now in this ladder match come Sunday. Probably not going to win. He might, though, just for the hell of it. But 
they had this tonight because the All-Star game for the NBA is on Sunday. So instead of having it on pay-per-view because Shaq couldn't do it then, they had it tonight. Shaq and Jade Cargill with the win. Um, Sting and Darby, uh, after Sting's promo, he was attacked by Team Taz before Darby made the save. Uh, going back to earlier on the night after the Cody Rhodes, Red Velvet, Shaq, Jade Cargill tag team match, mixed tag team match at that, we had Jericho and MJF Inner Circle Revolution press conference, for God's sakes, with the Young Bucks, as Jericho and MJF will challenge the Bucks for the tag team titles on Sunday. Um, Ryo Mizunami became the new number one contender, winning the Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament. She'll face Sheeta on Sunday for the Women's Championship. Um, yeah, other than that, not a whole lot. I mean, of course, you've been listening the past how long, so you know what the hell is going on. But um, to close it out, they, as mentioned, had Hangman defeat Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn. Hangman and John Silver defeat Big Money Matt. Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn in private party. And then Hardy attacked before Dark Order attacked. And then all the tag teams attacked one another to close out the show. So that leads us to AW Revolution this Sunday, March 7th, 2021. Where we will have a casino tag team battle royale. Might as well end Dynamite tonight and start off Revolution on Sunday on the same foot, I guess. Casino Tag Team Battle Royale, in which the winner will receive a future World Tag Team Championship match. Okay, now whoever the hell wins this will either face the Young Bucks or Chris Jericho and MJF. Whoever wins the Tag Team Championship match on Sunday Revolution, which we'll get more into in a second. But um, currently in this match, now as mentioned, I saw more tag teams in the ring just within the past few minutes that aren't even in this. So I don't know if some have been pulled replaced or if they're just going to keep adding on and we're going to have 20 tag teams in this battle royal or not. I don't know. But right now, Casino Tag Team Battle Royal in which the winner will receive once more a future World Tag Team Championship match. It'll be Bear Country, whoever the hell they are, versus Dark Order versus Dark Order. Dark Order, Alex Reynolds, and John Silver as Dark Order 1 and then Dark Order 2 in this Tag Team Battle Royal will be Evil Uno and Stu Grayson. So Fill me in on who the hell Bear Country is, if you would. Don't know. By any means, I don't really watch AW Dark. Um, so I won't be watching AW Dark moving forward, or hell, even AW Dark uh, Elevation with Big Show. Paul White, of course, who is on the show tonight as well. And we'll get more into his uh, announcement uh, a little bit later on here, coming up shortly. But Casino Tag Team Battle Royal, Bear Country, Dark Order, Alex Reynolds, and John Silver. Dark Order, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson. And then Santana Ortiz of the Inner Circle will also be on this. Butcher and the Blade, Private Party, Top Flight. Um, saw SCU out there. Uh, saw Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. Uh, Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall. The Nightmare Family, among a few other tag teams. So who the hell knows who's going to be on this tag team battle royal. Long story short, come Revolution on Sunday for AEW. Uh, so I'm not even going to pick a winner for that. Uh, but whoever the hell does win uh, would face uh, whoever is AW World Tag Team Champions following Revolution on Sunday, whether it be the Young Bucks once more or Jericho and MJF of the Inner Circle. Now, what would be interesting is if um, Jericho and MJF won the Tag Team titles and then the Inner Circle, Centeno Ortiz, won the Battle Royal. And then with the feud that's you know currently going on right now with Sammy Guevara quitting, wasn't even on the show tonight. I don't know if you know they're just gonna keep him off TV for the time being or what. I don't know how that's gonna play out by any means. But I mean that'd be as you know we're having right now on NXT the demise of the Undisputed Era. Potentially have the demise of the Inner Circle on AEW with you know Jericho and MJF as your new World Tag Team Champions, and then Aaron Sir Santana Ortiz uh, win the Battle Royal. They have to face off for a uh, tag team championship match then. And then it goes back to Jericho and MJF in singles competition, whether it be at double or nothing or all out. Because we know uh, for sure we're going to be getting that. It's just a matter of when. It's when they pull the trigger on it and go with it. So um, so that's that. But then Sheeta will then face um, Ryu Mizunami, who defeated Nala Rose tonight. 
uh, to win the Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament. It'll be Sheeta and Mizunami for the AEW Women's World Championship. So, give me Sheeta. They got to figure out their women's division. That long story short, I've said it time and time again. I, I went on about it earlier, and that's all I'll say about it for now. They have to figure out. AEW has to figure out their women's division moving forward. It's absolutely pathetic, ridiculous. So Sheeta will win, but I want to be shocked if this Mizunami, you know, wins. But she already won the tournament, so does she win the title? Maybe, probably not, but we'll see. We also got Miro and Kip Sabian versus Best Friends with Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. Sir Charles himself with Trent Beretta potentially returning at some point in time. Um, Miro and Kip for the win, though. However, Best Friends will probably win, and then Miro turns on Kip or Kip turns on Miro. Um, but it's going to be game over for somebody, so we'll see. But should be a good match. Uh, then we'll have the... Face of the Revolution ladder match in which the winner of that will receive a future uh, TNT uh, title match as well. It'll be um, Cody Rhodes, Scorpio Sky, Pentagon, Pentel Zero M, Lance Archer, uh, along with Max Caster, who defeated Dark Order number 10 Preston Vance tonight in the co main event of Dynamite. And then one more participant that we don't know who it's going to be. Whether it be who Big Show's bringing in, Paul White with the major signee for AW, or if it's going to be somebody that's just going to add in and, hey, we've had this announced, but we forgot to, hey, put him in this match for now. But, yeah, so that's the, the latter match. If it is, I'm going to pick uh, Cody Rhodes or Scorpio Sky to win, okay? But if it is. Because they're going to have to get Cody back on his feet after losing to uh, Shaq. But that was all for ratings. For now, at least. Um, because they could still do something with Shaq and show. You know, uh, to, to wrap that up from, you know, five years ago now. That, of course, happened in the WWE. But um, if, in fact, whoever the hell Big Show is coming uh, or bringing into the company, whoever's coming up, so to speak... And, you know, is this Hall of Fame worthy um, wrestler that they're going to be signing? If they're in this ladder match, whoever that is will win this ladder match. I don't know who it's going to be, but whoever it is, you know, could could win that, I think. Um, And I'll leave it at that for the time being. Street Fight, Team Taz, Sting and Darby Allin. Sting and Darby are going to be winning that, no doubt about that. Not much else to be said there. Um, big money match Hangman Adam Page and Matt Hardy hopefully Hangman wins uh, they could go either way this but Hangman needs it more than Matt Hardy and Hangman if he wins he's going to become the new leader of the Dark Order long story short there I think and then your uh, two main event matches even though you know your big money match with Hangman and Hardy is a main event worthy match your ladder match is main event worthy. Street fights main event worthy. Um, you know, Mero and Kip and Orange Cassidy, main event worthy. Um, so, oh, they actually added in on the buy-in as well. Uh, don't have this in my notes by any means, but they added in just recently there to close out Dynamite tonight. Uh, it'll be Thunder Rose and Rio. Yes, Thunder Rose and Rio with. Uh, Britt Baker and Reba in tag team action. So in that, give me... I had to think about that one for a second. Um, give me Britt Baker and Reba to pick up a win. Uh, but I wouldn't be shocked if Thunder and Rio win just because three of those four are number one contenders, honestly, for uh, the AW Women's Championship. So we'll see what they do there. But we have the... AW World Tag Team Championships and the AW World Heavyweight Championship also on the line as well on Sunday at Revolution. In the AW World Tag Team Championships, it'll be the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson taking on the Inner Circle, Chris Jericho, and MJF. 
as mentioned earlier, they can go either way with this. I think Jericho and MJF need it more than the Young Bucks right now. I'm not going to be shocked if the Young Bucks retain. They'll, they probably will. Um, but it's all just going to depend on when they want to pull the trigger for Jericho and MJF in singles. Because if they do it now, of course, Young Bucks are going to retain. But if they wait and then have it, you know, uh, fall out over the summer and then have Jericho and MJF at All Out Labor Day, we'd have Inner Circle Jericho and MJF winning on Sunday. Then they drop the titles at double or nothing. Fantasy booking or not, call it whatever. I don't really care. This is what they're going to be doing. It's going to be Jericho and MJF in singles at some point in time. It's just a matter of when, folks. Guarantee it, okay? Mark my words. Because Jericho's put over, you know, how much talent over the past two years. Just in AEW, okay? So, just a matter of when. But if... They want Jericho MJF at double or nothing. Young Bucks will retain. If they want Jericho MJF at all out, Inner Circle Jericho and MJF will win the tag team titles on Sunday. And I think they will. I think Jericho and MJF are going to win these tag team titles because Jericho is a tag team with whoever the hell he's been in a tag team with over the years. As he mentioned earlier tonight during the press conference, they brought in um, who they bring in uh, again. Um, Bischoff was there. Brandon Walker and Conrad Thompson backwards for how it went. He has Conrad, Brandon Walker, and Bischoff, um, which I don't know what NXT is thinking of Brandon Walker. As I said earlier, because he was on Vengeance Day kickoff pre-show last month, he works for Barstool Sports. He can do whatever the hell he wants, you know, so that's not that big of a deal, but people are going to make it out to be a big big deal, no doubt about it. Um, but uh, yeah, it doesn't matter on when they want Jericho MJF in singles. And Jericho's going to put over MJF, and then MJF's probably going to get a world title shot and probably become world champion then after that. Um, but we'll see. Only time's going to tell from now until... Because, I mean, you're running into early 22, 22 then next year uh, by that point. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think Jericho and MJF are going to win these titles on Sunday against Young Bucks. Young Bucks have had them now for, what, a little over two months. They don't need them anyway. People know who the Young Bucks are, but... It was just right now, at least, as Omega's champion to make the elite with the Good Brothers involved looked bigger than what they already are, stronger than what they already are, and with the Inner Circle being the top faction, the elite, you know, back on top too, sweet me. But um, yeah, Young Bucks, Inner Circle, Matt and Nick Jackson, Chris Jericho, MJF. If, as I mentioned, uh, they want Jericho, MJF at double or nothing. Young Bucks will retain, but if they want Jericho MJF at all out, Inner Circle Jericho MJF will win these titles on Sunday. I think they will, and then they'll drop them at Double or Nothing, and then they'll feud all summer long, and then they'll have the uh, match with Jericho and MJF at all out uh, to close out the summer into the fall, Labor Day weekend at AEW All Out. And, you know, like I said, Jericho MJF, that'll steal the show, no doubt about it. So, just my thoughts and opinions on that for the time being. But, of course, things could always change. But then we also have... So, yeah, give me the inner circle. Give me Jericho and MJF to defeat the Young Bucks on Sunday at AW Revolution to become your new AW World Tag Team Champions. But then we also have uh, an exploding barbed wire death match for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship with Kenny Omega and John Moxley. Moxley's going to be going away for a short time here coming up shortly over the next few months. I mean, they probably could, and I only say that because Renee Young, of course, Renee Paquette, his wife, um, is in fact pregnant as well. So both Cody and John Moxley, Cody Riz and John Moxley, are about to become fathers for the first time ever. So congrats to them. But um, they could have Mox de- defeat Omega because it's an exploding barbed wire death match. Um... You know, who the hell knows how the finish is going to be or how the hell the match is going to go from start to finish if there's going to be, um, you know, any casualties by any means or not. They'll be safe about it, but and nobody's going to die for real by any means, but um, they'll probably put it out to be that way. But they could put it back on Mox because he ha- held the title from last year at Revolution to this past December, ready for Christmas, when Omega beat him 
okay? Um, and Omega is now, what, three-month champion? So three months, yeah. Moxley from Revolution to Double or Nothing. That's three months there. But um, what I think is going to happen here, long story short, because I, I do believe Moxley is going to be going away. He just faced Kenta again in New Japan. Um, but, and Cody's probably going to be taking some time off eventually too. But they could put it back on Mox and then take it off and double or nothing. And then he goes away. You know, he's gone then for a while because I think Renee's due in June. Um, as she stated on her new podcast, be sure to go uh, check it out. Shout out to uh, Oral Sessions. Oral Sessions, yes, it's a podcast, so be sure to go check it out. Not the Oral Sessions, you know, your dirty mind's probably thinking of right now, but yeah. And she's been getting a lot of slack for it, but it's actually an interesting name. Uh, especially for a, a podcast that, you know, she's hosting, being the person that she is. Uh, but, um, and, and I mean, you can take that whatever way you want, I really don't care, but, um, you know... We'll see what happens. Um, but uh, Kenny Omega, John Moxley, okay? Omega's going to retain. They're not going to put this title back on Moxley after just a three month title reign for Omega. Because uh, since uh, Omega, the cleaner himself, has become champion. AEW's, you know, taking it to another level, honestly, they have. And there's a lot of history with these two, no doubt about it. But in this exploding barbed wire death match, okay? And to write off John Moxley in the perfect way that they possibly could, Omega's going to retain this title. He's going to beat John Moxley and win on Sunday at Revolution. John Moxley, they're going to say. He dies in this barbed wire, exploding barbed wire death match. And he's gone. And then when they feel the time is right for him to come back, that's when he's going to come back. Whether Omega is still champion at that point in time or not, that's probably how it'll play out, I bet. But what do I know? So, everybody has their own opinion, but that's my opinion. I think Omega's going to retain. Yeah, Omega's going to retain. He'll stay champion. And then maybe, just maybe... Whoever the hell uh, Paul White knows about that AEW's giving a contract to and signing, maybe that person won't be in the ladder match. Maybe that person will uh, solidify themselves as a new number one contender for Omega's um, AEW World Heavyweight Championship uh, on top of all that. Because it's a Hall of Fame worthy wrestler. Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame worthy, as mentioned earlier. Um, mean, you know, two different things. They really do. Hall of Fame, you're in the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame, worthy. You're worthy of it. You're good, but you you haven't been good enough to get in yet. There's a reason why you're not in. Um, I mean, Bubba Ray and Kurt Angle come to mind j just because they're not really doing a whole lot right now. In the ring, um... Hall of Fame worthy. I mean, you can throw in Big Cass just because he returned last week. And he's looking better than ever. But he was nothing special to begin with. Um, that was all Enzo on the mic. And, you know, Carmella because she's fabulous. She's hot as hell. Shout out to Corey Graves. Um, and, and, you know, we saw what happened with Big Cass after Enzo was fired. And, you know, Cass couldn't cut it in singles competition by himself. And then, of course, he got fired. Eric Rowan, Lars Sullivan just released from the WWE, maybe. Just because they're sort of big guys. And, you know, Paul White Big Show's the big show. Um, you know, Rowan, you know, going back to what I said about Bret Hart and DDP earlier, you know, he came out during the Brody uh, tribute show. But... A few others come to mind as I've made a list over the past hour or so now. That very well could be the major signing AEW is going to have debut on Sunday at Revolution that Paul White knows about, but we don't yet. And we can think all we want. 
as mentioned, somebody that has history with Big Show. Going back to WCW, early, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, into WWE as well. What about RVD? You know, he's been getting a lot of talk as of late. Along with Ryback, Ryan Reeves, who uh, is best friends with CM Punk. Maybe Punk. I don't want to hear it, though. It's not going to be CM Punk. I doubt it will be Punk. There's no way in hell it's CM Punk. If it's CM Punk, everybody's going to flip the hell out. But out of any of those Hall of Fame worthy that's not in the Hall of Fame, because Hart, DDP, Bubba Ray, Angle, they're all in the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame worthy, yeah, Punk, okay, of course. But then these few that just got cut, Big Cass, Eric Rowan, Ryback, the Hall of Fame worthy. Yeah, depending on who you ask. That leaves RVD. I think RVD might be the one that they're bringing in on Sunday, honestly. And I have thought about it over the past hour. I think RVD Rob Van Dam uh, will be the major signing. Uh, that is Hall of Fame worthy for uh, AEW, for All Elite Wrestling to um, appear and get a contract signed with the company on Sunday at Revolution. Uh, one, because it sort of makes sense because you know it has to do with the big show. They have history. And then, as mentioned, if, of course, whoever it is will get inserted and be that seventh participant in the ladder match, you have RVD in the ladder match, you have him win it, and you have him challenge in for the TNT Championship. Because whoever wins that ladder match gets a TNT title match. Opportunity, at least. So, I think it's going to be RVD, long story short, to close this out. But those are, in fact, my AEW Dynamite and WWE NXT live reactions play play live right here on YouTube this evening. Of course, an audio only be uploaded tomorrow right here on the channel. So, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. As always, on social media, links in the description below, the thumbs up button, share hashtag AEW, hashtag WWE NXT, uh, chat questions and comments, super chat, super stickers, always greatly appreciated as well. Red subscribe button, little notification bell next to it as well if you haven't done so already. Easiest way to sit today is on social media. Links once more in the description below. Uh, but just as we saw The Miz cash in, become WWE champion, Bobby Lashley defeated him on Raw. The other night, as Bobby Bitch is your new WWE champion, NXT was average tonight. AEW pretty good uh, on the flip side with Revolution uh, just right around the corner. Uh, this Sunday, the big question, of course, is with Paul White now in the company with AEW, who is he teasing as... This Hall of Fame worthy wrestler that's going to be AEW's next major signing that'll debut on Sunday at Revolution. That's a big question. Um, exiting this evening, entering Sunday uh, for the pay per view, AEW Revolution here in 2021. Long story short, I think it's going to be RVD, like I just said, but we'll see. Um, hopefully, it's somebody good. Hopefully, it'll give you know them. Somebody to push potentially, but um, only time is going to tell. But those are, you know, just live reactions, play, play thoughts and opinions, of course, throughout the night. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. But RVD as the because you know this last part, AW Revolution preview predictions to, to close it out as well. RVD, I think, is going to be the. Um, the mystery person, so to speak, the Hall of Fame worthy major next major signing for All Elite Wrestling, and then Hangman defeats Matt Hardy in the big money match. The Inner Circle with Jericho and MJF defeat the Young Bucks and become AEW World Tag Team Champions, and then with the main event, the exploding barbed wire death match for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. I believe Kenny Omega will defeat John Moxley. They'll, so to speak, uh, kill him off. They'll, you know, make him go away for quite some time. They'll write him off TV. They'll kill him off because it's a death match for God's sake. So, but this ex 
exploding barbed wire death matches will have everyone talking. Mark my words, no doubt about it. It'll blow up uh, the wrestling community. Um, we haven't seen one of these in a um, North American professional wrestling company in quite some time, if ever. You know, these normally take place overseas in the land of the rising sun. So, RVD has Big Show's um, major signing. Hangman defeating Big Money Matt. Inner Circle, Jericho and MJF defeating the Young Bucks and becoming AW World Heavyweight World Tag Team Champions, excuse me there. And then in the AW World Heavyweight Championship match, I believe Kenny Omega will win, retain his AW World title. He'll defeat John Moxley. And he will, in wrestling terms, kill John Moxley and still be your AEW World Heavyweight Champion following the main event of AEW Revolution on Sunday in their exploding barbed wire death match. Once more, thank you for tuning in and listening to my live reactions play play live right here on YouTube of AEW Dynamite and WWE NXT this evening as it was a crossroads for Revolution this upcoming Sunday and then the future of both promotions um, very bright, as I always say, but uh, sort of unknown for the so-called Wednesday Night War moving forward uh, with NXT now potentially moving from Wednesdays to Tuesday nights. We'll find out next week uh, with William Regal having an announcement potentially on that with two championship matches uh, on top of that, as well as mentioned with Io Shirai and Tony Storm and Finn Balor, Adam Cole. But um, to close it out here, Kenny Omega defeats and kills John Moxley in their exploding barbed wire death match to retain and still be your AEW World Heavyweight Champion.